All right, Steven. Yes. Yes. All right. I I want to start off by asking you, how much do you know about New Japan? Like, what what is your exposure to it? A, a like, lot of my just... exposure through New Japan Go. is the wrestlers who have come in to WWE, either through NXT or anything like that. Um, my friends online who have talked about it a lot, GIFs, but um, I have never sat down and watched an actual event of New Japan. Okay. Uh, that's that's not bad. Um, let's try, I'm trying to think here. Like, has anyone come from New Japan to NXT recently? Uh, I mean, like, Kenta's the first one to come to mind, but Kenta was with Noah more, more so than New Japan. But um, whatever. Uh, the fact remains is that Wrestle Kingdom's always a good place to start with New Japan. Wrestle Kingdom's also always the longest show of the entire year. It's typically gone close to five hours. Oh, my God. Year. Yes, um, it's but it's it's worth it. It's not like a slog the way like um, WrestleMania is five hour a five hour slog. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, is Wrestle Kingdom essentially there WrestleMania? Yes. Uh, recently, Kenny Omega has been saying that like no WrestleMania is you guys is Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> you know, because 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 that's how he is. That's kind of that's kind of guy he is. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it is the biggest show of the year. Uh, for them. And of close comparison would be WrestleMania. Um, and it's held every year on January 4th. No matter the day of the week it is, it's always on January 4th every year. Any um, importance to that date? Not that I'm aware of. Um, let me see here. I, I I don't think so. I think it's just like they decide that like, oh, that's like the to- the January 4th Tokyo Dome show. Um Let me see. I don't think that I don't think there's anything really uh to it. Uh whatever. Um, but it's just how, how it is. And also typically they do have a show like the past few years, there's been like a show the day afterwards, um, which is held in like, Korokin Hall, which is the biggest comparison for that is like, it's essentially Japan's, um, Viking Hall, like their East, like the way the ECW arena is here. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's a very small place holds like maybe like 2000 people, but like every wrestling company runs shows, runs shows there. And even, and New Japan runs like the, that's actually like you know how the Raw after WrestleMania is like the biggest Raw of the year. Mm-hmm. That that essentially that's it is with like New Japan. Like that sh- that show afterwards is like the one where like AJ Styles was kicked out of Bullet Club. It's like where like people like Minoru Suzuki came back from Noah after being away for away for a year, and and I'll hope essentially big things happen the day day after. Um, but we're wor- we're worrying about Wrestle Kingdom right now. Mm-hmm. So so we're gonna go through everything here. Match by match, and I'm just gonna like, get you familiar with everyone here. All right. And now the first match is typically it's a pre-show match. It's the New Japan Rumble, which is one one of two matches that they have to try and get everyone onto the Wrestle Kingdom card every year. Okay. And it's just everyone's everyone's just dumped into this. It's it's actually like a timed battle royal, so it's closest thing to like the Royal Rumble, but has nowhere near the same amount of fanfare. <laughs> like. <laughs> No one has entrances. Like people enter, like it's it's held like on the pre-show when people are still filing into the Tokyo Dome. Oh wow! Um, yeah, it's but it's so it's just like hey, you know, everyone's here for the for this match. Um, but it's kind of weird because like uh, typically in the past, like that's that's where they have like a lot of their like special like surprise like appearances. Like a couple of years ago, they had Yoshiaki Fujiwara in it. As in the guy who literally invented the Fujiwara armbar oh my was God. in the New Japan Rumble. Oh yeah. my God! <laughs> His he was six, 66 years old, <laughs> and he he definitely looks sixty six years old. He's sixty eight now, and he looks about six hundred eighty, honestly. <laughs> um, but he just go, he just walked in. He walked in there, like literally just walked, got in. I forget who it was that went after him, but he just immediately slammed him on the ground in the arm bar. Like that's incredible. It, it, it was because it's like, oh, oh, look at this decrepit old man. Holy shit, he's tearing that guy's arm out of the socket. <laughs> um. Also, uh, I think it was last year. Um, Ming. No way. WCW's Ming. Yeah. WCW's Ming showed up in it. Um. <laughs> Because uh, because Ming is actually uh, the I think he's like the uncle or father of like one of the teams in New Japan. I'll get to that. In, I'll get to that in a moment. I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> I'll be yeah. as horrifying as he is. <laughs> oh no, it's it's fantastic. Um, 
but anyway, so so the thing though with the New Japan Rumble is whoever wins it like gets a shot at a, any championship they want like at some point during the year. And oh shit. Mhm. It is used for like a uh, sort of things like um you've watched you have you watched enough WCW to know who uh Yuji Nagata is? Uh no, I don't. I don't know who that is. That's that's fine. Yuji Nagata was like he was like a part of like WCW as like he pretty much wrestled almost exclusively on WCW Saturday Night. Um, oh, okay, but it was like back when like uh in in the Nitro days in like ninety seven ninety eight where they literally had a working relationship with New Japan, which is kind of wild, honestly. Um, but they did like kind of like a talent exchange, which is why like Great Muda was like a member of the NWO, but yes. they never really played up how important it was, honestly. Um. But Yuji Nagata is like his thing is that he's he's he wants to be the first IWGP heavyweight champion over the age of fifty, and he's forty nine now. So essentially, he's training until he's. Uh, he says like, "When I'm fifty, I'm coming for you." Essentially, <laughs> that is incredible. Mm-hmm. He also like he does this thing like he'll put like he'll sit on a guy's back, put him in an armbar. And then do like the Undertaker thing where he rolls his eyes up and you just see the whites of it. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's so cool. It It is. And he won the Rumble last year and he contended for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Um, okay, I should say like IWGP is the governing body that does the titles for New Japan. Yes. And it's an acronym for International Wrestling Grand Prix. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So... Almost all of the uh, championships are IWGP. Haven't uh, have IWGP belts also shown up on uh, TNA? Yes, TNA did have a working relationship with New Japan in wow. the two thousands, to the point that um I they had I think it was like one of the first Red Wrestle Kingdoms, um TNA wrestlers were wrestling on um uh, on Wrestle Kingdom. And, like, the TNA world title was defended by Jeff Hardy, I think it was. That's like, crazy. It well, Yeah, and, like, the thing, though, is, like, it definitely, like, was noticeable. Because cause you see, like, all these regular New Japan guys, and then you're just like, oh, what's DJ Z doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if DJ Z was a part of it, but, like, it's, it's it was, like, essentially that level of, like, okay, what are these guys doing here? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, oh, uh, oh, uh. New Japan's working with TNA, um, Impact Wrestling. Now we got we got to get the oh yes, correct. of course, of course. Uh, how yeah. long did that deal go on for? God, like a couple of years. Or no so. way. Like, I think so. It was it wasn't too long, um, but it was uh, there. There actually is like another TNA link with New Japan, which I'll get to later. I'm um, excited. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh yeah, but that's that's essentially New Japan Rumble. Like a lot of it's just like. A lot of dudes who wouldn't be on the card normally were in the, or will be in like that match. Mm-hmm. Um, now the opening match you see here is the IWGP Junior Tag Team Championship match. Which yes, New Japan does take like their junior division, which like cruiserweight division, much more seriously than other companies because mm-hmm. it's like they have like separate they have a separate division for it. They have tournaments for it. They actually like enforce like the weight limits for that and for it and everything. Um, so it actually is like kind of a big deal. Um, now the the teams here are the champions, uh, which is uh, their team name is Roppongi 3K, and that's Sho and Yo uh, against the Young Bucks. I'm assuming you're familiar with the Young Bucks, yes. even tangentially. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You kind of can't, yeah. kind of can't not be. Uh, uh, everyone has to be at this point. Yeah, because it's like the Young Bucks basically have like figured out wrestling and figured out how to like. They they gave the system enough that like you could buy a Young Bucks shirt in Hot Topic now. Which yes, is insane. Um, so Rapagi 3K though, there's a bit of a history with them, and then um, it's it goes back to um, um, what I have to what I'm gonna explain now is um, New Japan's has a system called like the Young Lion system, which mm-hmm. is how they handle trainees. Um, when you're a trainee with New Japan. You, um, after like, you know, training for like a few years, like in like, and like you're in like their dojo and, and stuff like that, you'll start wrestling on shows and new young lions wrestle on shows and they just wear like plain black trunks, plain, plain black boots and like have like next to no gimmick whatsoever. Um, they just go out there and they usually wrestle on like the undercards and they'll either wrestle each other 
or they'll be like on like a tag team with like other wrestlers and they almost always lose. Gotcha. But that's just how it is. And like another another thing I like is um I that I like about it is like every young lion, like their finisher their finisher is either a roll up or a Boston crab. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, we're stripping you down to your basic elements and you have to make it work. Essentially. Gotcha. Um so a couple of years ago, uh when I was watching, there were these two wrestlers named uh uh Yohei Komatsu and Sho Tanaka. And I was watching like things like I was watching during like G1 Climax and stuff like that. Uh where it was just like, oh shit, these guys are really good actually. Uh whether they're wrestling each other or wrestling like bigger stars, we're just like, oh, these guys are awesome. Now the next thing with Young Lions is that after they've been wrestling on the New Japan shows for a year, they then leave New Japan for like a year or a year and a half or two years, and they go on what's called an excursion. Mm-hmm. And they go and they wrestle in different in like different companies because they're like, you know what? We want you to learn other styles. We want you to learn like other wrestling companies because we want you to become a, a more seasoned wrestler. That's awesome. And yeah, and it's like whenever and they go and they wrestle for things like um. Sho and Yo went and they uh, were the uh, Tempura Boys in uh, wrestling in Mexico and in Ring of Honor uh, for the past year. I'm a little irritated because like I didn't realize that they were the Tempura Boys and Ring of Honor came to where I live like a couple of times over the past couple of years and I didn't go. Oh no! And I miss and I miss them and I'm kicking myself over it. Um. So Sho and Yo. Uh, they were on their excursion, but this past November, they came back to New Japan under their new gimmick of Roppongi 3K, and they're called Roppongi 3K because they're managed by this wrestler named Rocky Romero, who was in a tag team with uh, Trent Beretta oh. from, from WWE, Yes, and they were Roppongi Vice, <laughs> and it's shortened to RPG Vice for whatever reason. <laughs> But the whole thing is just like it. Essentially, the gimmick is just cops? Question mark. That's incredible. It's it's weird because it's like they kind of like were like that, but it's like Rocky is out here wearing an eye patch. Trent is out here with like a jacket with no shirt and like a a a Bill Murray like knee pad. So it's like they looked like cop. If they look, if they were cops, they were cops from like that game from a few years ago, All Points Bulleted. That's so like, good. <laughs> yeah that's so but they good were, yeah but um but they were they were a junior tag team and they held the belts a couple of times but this past july the team split up because trent moved up moved on to the heavyweight division and rocky was left without a partner so he fa- he got show and yo and he became their manager and so and rocky romero by the way is like a legitimate musician and he writes all of his theme music so he like wrote like he like wrote his Rapongi, the Rapongi Vice theme. He wrote the theme for his team beforehand, which was Forever Hooligans, and he wrote the Rapongi 3K theme, which is the corniest fucking song, honestly. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. So back in like uh in November, uh they show they sh- they showed up and they showed up as mystery opponents for the current junior tag team champions. Uh and then, and they were just like and Rocky's like I have a you're gonna face for Poggy 3K you don't know who they are and it's Show and Yo and the arena goes fucking crazy because they're like oh Show and Yo are back and in their first match back they won the junior tag team championship wow and yeah and it was and it's great so they um so they so they won the tag team championship and they're being challenged by the the Young Bucks here. And it's kind of weird because, like, in the past two years, the Junior Tag Team Championship has been defended in, like, four-way tag team uh, matches, which basically meant, like, the opening match of Wrestle Kingdom is four teams fighting and just doing a million spots to the outside. Yeah. You know, the one where, like, everyone on every team gathers together, and then one dude vaults over the top rope onto everybody so he's safe. Yep, yep. That's That sort of thing. Yeah, everyone's trying to get their shit in. Oh, oh, absolutely everyone gets their shit in. Are you kidding me? <laughs> So with the the excursion, is that something that uh, every wrestler has done for the for the most every part? Every wrestler, every wrestler that goes through New Japan's uh, system, like trading with them, 
goes through the Young Lions uh, system. Um, a lot of guys actually uh, that started in New Japan, like they're in like the main event, like started out like this way. Um, like Kazusha Okada and Tetsuya Naito, the guys wrestling in the main event, they were Young Lions to start out with. And Okada, who's the IWGP champion currently, he actually, part of his excursion, was going to TNA. <laughs> oh my god. Um, And fun, funny side note with that, he went to TNA. Um, Japanese guy in TNA, like, he didn't know anyone there. The Young Bucks of all people, like, basically befriended him, just like, no, you're, you're our guy, you're our friend now. And even though they never, like, wrestled, like, together that much or anything, they were just like, no, Okada's our friend. And then when Okada went back to New Japan, sometime later, he contacts the Young Bucks. He's like, hey, you want, guys want to come work for New Japan? <laughs> <laughs> and so because of that, the Young Bucks went to New Japan as part of Bullet Club. And and that and here we are. The, and that was part, basically like the start of the Young Bucks real big rise to prominence. And it was with it was because they were nice to Okada who then goes back to do Japan has enough clout. He's like, let's bring the young bucks in. And here we are. <laughs> That's incredible. Cause like, I, I listened to a, a little shoot, uh, a shoot interview they did. I think it was with uh, our video talking about how like their times in TNA were just like, they're just not great. Uh, especially mm. working with Vince, you know, changing them to uh, uh, Generation Me and all that, uh, yep. and like that's Max and Max and Jeremy Buck. Yep. Oh my God. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was at like a one of the TNA pay per views uh, where they did like a ladder match, like against like whatever Jimmy, whatever Jimmy Rave's team was, like a that team with that team that had like the Guitar Hero controllers. Do you remember that? Oh God, I do. I don't remember what they're called though. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, like they they were I I saw them with that. It's just like, oh, I guess they're cool and here we are now. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, like it was in TNA that they fostered that relationship with Okada that led to them coming to New Japan. So, hell yeah. So, with with the Young Bucks, um or just Bullet Club in general, are they looked at as like the heel group in New Japan or are they kind of like one of those um Almost like the NWO at the time where, like, yeah, the bad guy that people love rooting for him anyway. It's it's kind of the second. It started out, like, the first way. Because Bullet Club was um, was formed by Prince Devitt, you know, Finn Balor mm -hmm. at first. You know, he, he, was the, he was the guy who started, started it completely. Um, and, yeah, they were heels. And they technically are heels because they, they cheat all the time in their matches, which is something that doesn't happen in Japan. Um, but people just grew to like them a lot. So now it's just like, and that kind of is what happened with, um, it, it's kind of funny because when Bullet Club came along, like what happened to Bullet Club now is what happened with uh, the stable Chaos. Um, hmm, excuse me. Um, Chaos is the stable that like, uh, that uh, Okada is the head of, but was actually formed by Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, wow. Shitsuke Nakamura originally formed Chaos, and Chaos was a villainous team. Um, and, but the thing is, it's like they were just over time, people just grew to like them because, like, oh, we like this wrestler, we like what they're doing, we like what they're doing, and it just any sort of healed this to them kind of got eroded away, and everyone's just like, no, Chaos is cool, whatever. <laughs> and then Bullet Club came along and just like, it pretty was like, oh, we we the we're the we the, the fucking bad guys now. Cat fucking New Japan, get the fuck out of here! That is a direct quote. <laughs> Prince, you can dig it up. You can find uh, Prince Devitt saying it, like calling Captain New Japan fucking with with putting so many O's in the word fuck. I can <laughs> say, <laughs> gotta find that. That is so good. I I don't know where to find it. Um, but I do remember remember that happening. So, and now Bullet Club is just like, it's kind of been eroded away. It's just like, no, I, I guess we like Bullet Club now. <laughs> um, and kind of the same thing happened with um, the other, one of the other stables, Los Ingobernables, led by Tetsuya Naito. I'll get to that in a little bit. Okay. Um, but it's, it's kind of a thing where it's just like, oh, this is the villainous stable. Oops, we kind of like them now. <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing because like, Heel face like dynamics are important, but it's not like the crux of everything with uh with New Japan. Gotcha. Yeah. 
Okay, but um, any other questions about like the first match? Um, I guess the only thing I have, not so much a question, more of an observation, just like, again, talking about the excursion thing. That is such a good idea. That mm-hmm. is such a good idea. Uh, like, cause I always hear when wrestlers come in through NXT, WWE, whatever, uh, when they're going through the Performance Center. I, I heard this a lot about Andretti Cien Almas, that uh, when he came in, he said that as his wrestling style uh, felt like it started to fade away, the more he started learning the WWE preferred style. Like, the idea of, mm-hmm. hey, you're going to wrestle in New Japan, but we want you to learn so much more, um, and now go wrestle for these promotions. I think that's such a great idea. Yeah, it, WWE kind of is, like you said, the opposite sort of way. They just, like, they bring guys in, and they kind of, like, put them through this ringer that make them into, like, doing WWE style, which is technically safer, but, like, is kind of homogeneized mm-hmm. sort, of, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And it's unfortunate, but, like, some guys, like, you know, they flourish under it. Other guys, like, they kind of struggle with it. Like, Andrade Cien Almas, like, he... He actually was a member of the Los Ingobernables stable. Really? Um, in Mexico. He was the leader of it. He was La Sombra in Mexico in CMLL. Um, and he, he used to wrestle under a mask. And when and I actually watched the match live where he was forced to unmask. And it and he when he took it off, um, and I saw him, like I was watching with my friend John, and we both saw it. We'd like, yo, fuck off. Why are you so handsome? What are you doing fucking around with a mask? <laughs> You, I was just like, this, this, man, what are you doing? He's a um, very good looking man, absolutely. <laughs> no, he was, he was, it was beautiful. <laughs> I, I was I was taken aback by it. Um, but like he showed up in WWE and he kind of like, kind of like d- didn't fit in like that much. It took him a while to like really get the style down, but now he's, he's fucking great. Yes. You know, I... His match with Drew McIntyre at War Games was way better than it had any right to be. Let's oh, be honest. Very true. Very true. Mm. All right. Um. So, next match. Uh, the second match is a uh, six-man tag team gauntlet match for the Never Open Weight Six-Man Tag Team Championship. Wh- so, what does that mean? Never Open Weight. So, Never uh, is something that was... Um, it's a part of New Japan. It was actually part of um. It was supposed to be like an offshoot promotion of New Japan, and it was meant to be like a like specifically one for like new like younger upcoming wrestlers, and it never became that, and it just became like an undercard title <laughs> for them. <laughs> gotcha. Like like it's it was supposed to be like for like younger wrestlers and everything, but like almost every wrestler that's held like the never open weight championship has been like over the age of 40. Um, <laughs> that doesn't mean they're bad, but it's just like, it's just like, we're going to make this thing for like young wrestlers. And your first title is Masato Tanaka. <laughs> so, um, but never is actually an acronym. Oh. Um, it stands for new blood evolution, valiantly eternal and radical. <laughs> Fuck. Yes. <laughs> I am so down. <laughs> yeah, I did not memorize that. I had the Wikipedia page open <laughs> for it, <laughs> but it's but like that's so a never open weight championship is something I'll get to later. Um, but like a couple, if it was if it wasn't last year, it was a couple of years ago. They introduced a never open weight six man tag team champion. Excuse me, tag team championships, um, which is like. Honestly, New Japan has a lot of friggin' titles, and they didn't need this, but they're, <laughs> they're making it work, honestly. Um, let's see here. Let me. I gotta look up something real quick. Because I'm, I'm looking at the uh, the card on New Japan site, and they're having the wrestlers here, and uh, there's a uh, lots of people in this match. Like, well, that's because it's five teams in this match, and it's a gauntlet match, so. Two teams start, one gets pinned, and then the other team moves on, and the last team the last team left is um is gonna be the champion. Mm-hmm. Um let's see here. Okay. So so the ch- current champions are Tamatonga, Tonga Loa, and Bad Luck Fale, and they're from Bullet Club. Okay. Um, Bad Luck Fale and Tamatonga are two of the original members of Bullet Club. Uh, Bad Luck Fale was the one who uh, Prince Devitt would always ride on his shoulders to the ring and stuff like that. 
<laughs> um, Bad Luck Fale is just like a really huge dude who is like kind of wrestles kind of slow, but like, eh, I don't think he's that cool, honestly. And lately he's been doing a thing where like, he's just wrestling in like t-shirts and like it, it, it looks like he's wearing like vans and like sweatpants in the ring. So it's like, oh, rad. <laughs> he, he, no, he, he looks like the uncle that shows up at the cookout. <laughs> And he's like, hey guys, I brought hey guys, I brought spoons. And it's just like, <laughs> cool man. We asked you to bring beer. <laughs> oh. And he goes, he goes over, he takes like two burgers, even though there's only enough for one for everybody. <laughs> like that you're just like, you don't want to say anything, but you don't want but like because yeah, you don't want to make a scene, but at the same time, you're like, I fucking hate that bad luck follows here. <laughs> Who invited him? <laughs> Who invited him? Um, but Tamatonga and so Tonga Loa, mm-hmm. um, here's the thing that used to, he used to be Camacho in um, WWE. Really? Yes. Oh, uh, t- he used to be Camacho in uh, in WWE. Um, so let me, let me just double check my sort of thing here. Yep, he was Camacho in WWE. Um, he's actually the brother of Tama Tonga, and they are the adoptive sons of Ming. Oh, that's, the two of them. That's cool. Yeah, so those are Ming's kids of uh, teaming up with Bad Luck Fale, Bad Luck Fale, and they are the current never open weight tag team champions. Um, so Tamatonga and Tonga Loa, they are um a tag team known as the Gorillas of Destiny, and in all their merch, all their graphics, of course, the acronym is just God on everything. I am cause... like fist bumping so hard right now. That is the best. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Someone has to like it. Um... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I I'm I'm not I I admittedly like I've not felt great about about like Tama Tonga but like he has definitely grown on me mm. as time has gone on, gone on. I am not a Bullet Club fan. I will put that out there like right now. But like I'm I'm trying to play it cool because I'm just, this is supposed to be informative more than anything. <laughs> um, but they are the current uh six man tag team champion champions. Um. Uh, so their t- so their team the teams they're facing the first one here is uh Ryusuke Taguchi Juice Robinson and Togi Mikami. First of all, Juice Robinson uh that's C J Parker from NXT. Oh, cool. As in the guy who broke Kevin Owens' nose. On his Not first as night. cool, but at least. <laughs> <laughs> to listen, listen. Even though he completely shattered, even though Kevin Owens' nose was completely shattered by him. The fact that he still cut his palm on, like, on that palm strike that he hit him with. Oh, oh, oh my God. Yeah, but, like, it was, like, two months after that he left NXT, and he actually went to New Japan, and he kind of was incorporated into, like, with the Young Lions, Um, but he, after, after a little bit, like, he actually moved up and is a part of, like, the main roster, and believe it or not, he rules <laughs> now. <laughs> I, no, it's... It, when he was there at first, like, they're just, like, fucking, first of all, like, of course I hear the name Juice Robinson. I'm like, the fuck you doing, man? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't, but now, now I'm just like, no, nah, Big Juice, love him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's great. And uh, the most, the best, the best thing he did recently is um, back in July, New Japan actually had, like, a show, uh, two shows in America in early July. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where they had, like, their tournament. For to determine the first I know GP US champion, and Juice was in that tournament and he did freaking great. And even though like he hasn't like won any championships or anything yet, he's gotten over with the fans and everyone everyone likes him. Like leaving NXT, coming to New Japan, like has worked out phenomenally well for him. That's um, good. Now he's teaming up with Togi Makabe here. Togi Makabe, um, first of all, his nickname is Sweets Makabe. Nice. Because motherfucker loves pastries, <laughs> loves sweets, <laughs> to the point that he had like a show on like New Japan's like service, where he would in t- he would go around towns he was in and find the sweet shops and just like watch them as they like make like cupcakes and taste it, taste them and stuff like that. That is there was definitely that is so episode- pure. <laughs> Oh no, that's how it it is. It's like you go to his Twitter, it's just like pictures of him in like convenience stores. He's just like, I found these chips, I'm eating them, they're great. <laughs> there was one there was one like episode of it 
where like they were like making marshmallows and like cutting them out of like like a big like pan and he's just looking at them like eyes like bugged like wide open he's like you can just do that you can just make marshmallows <laughs> Now, the thing with Togi Makabe is, like, he's, like, a, a fucking rough dude. Like, he, in every, like, everywhere he, like, anytime New Japan's, like, okay, dress nice for this, like, press conference or something, he's always out there with a button-up shirt with the top button undone and wearing a chain around his neck. Metal. It's just, <laughs> that's just how he, he always, just always has a chain around his neck. But he just, but he loves sweets. So that's just, that's just how he is. Uh, uh, he rules. I'm looking at his, uh, his bio here on the New Japan site, and I like that they have their theme song. But since his theme song is the immigrant song, like the, the Led Zeppelin song. Yes, really, it is the Led Zeppelin <laughs> song. It is so the Led Zeppelin song that they have to mute it every time it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> like, like literally, like they, it's every time, like they. have a lot of guys used to have like music that like licensed music to come out to. Yes. And whenever they would broadcast it, they, it would just, the, the entire like broadcast would just be muted and a thing on, and like a, a message appear on the screen. and would be like, we have to mute this because of copyright. Um, everyone's like kind of like shifted away from it, except for Togi Makabe, who still comes out to immigrant song. Because <laughs> he, he's, he's kind of like an elder statesman in New Japan. He's I think he's held the IWGP uh, championship at least like once. Um, but no, he's he's really cool. He's had a lot of like he, he's had a lot of lot of like really like rough like matches and everything. But uh, nowadays he's kind of just floating around like in tag teams and stuff like that. Mm. Um, now, the other guy on the team is Ryusuke Taguchi, who. <sighs> oh. Imagine if your really dorky, embarrassing dad was a wrestler. Oh, no. <laughs> and he loved the number 69. Oh, good gore. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, so Taguchi actually was like a Prince Devitt's uh, tag team partner. Really? Before, like, yeah, Prince Devitt turned on him when he uh, formed Bullet Club, actually. Um, also, just a, a side note, I want to say that like, Prince Devitt has stated in the past that the proper pronunciation is Bullet Club, not The Bullet Club. You're not supposed to use the the. <laughs> they do all the time now because, like, he's not there to correct anybody. I don't think anyone cares, but but I care <laughs> with it, about it. So it's it. No one's no one's going to care one way or the other, but it is supposed to be just Bullet Club, not The Bullet Club. Good to know. Um, yes. Feel free to ignore that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, so... Taguchi, his I think his like nickname is Funky Weapon, and he has multiple attacks which involve hitting you with his ass. I am reading about that right now, and I am losing my shit. <laughs> He's constantly uttering catchphrases like "Oh my, gar- oh my Garfunkel!" Like <laughs> what? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a fucking dork. Um, and he would sometimes do a thing where like he would like make fun of a wrestler and make fun of like their entrance and everything um, to the point that he was one of, he was doing it to Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, and one of the last matches before um, Shinsuke's last wrestle kingdom, he faced Taguchi and just kicked his ass. Cause he got tired of him, <laughs> of him ripping off his moves. <laughs> um, but like, <sighs> so that's, and, and one of the things that Taguchi did recently is, have you seen anything about this wrestler named Masked Horse? No. I can't believe I'm going to... Uh, uh, I, this, okay. No, I, <laughs> I'm very divided on this because I admit it rules, but also I'm just like, please don't make me like Taguchi. Um, <laughs> um, recently, this wrestler showed... Okay, have you ever seen like these videos of like this weird like Japanese horse racing game uh, where like horses are like doing like splits and like running on their hind legs or like and like shit like that. I feel like I have. Yeah, it's and it's this company like does does that. And it's supposed to be like you buy this DVD of it or and you like you gamble on the result or whatever. Um, New Japan entered a um a working relationship with them to release a New Japan version of it, which is also like a dating sim for some reason. Fucking a. And you literally could date D- Togi Mikami and take him on like like sweet states, which is why it was imperative that you knew about Togi Mikami. <laughs> um, 
But one of the one of the things in that is Masked Horse. And this mysterious wrestler showed up a couple of shows ago named Masked Horse, who is a guy in a horse mask with green tights that looks suspiciously like Taguchi. <laughs> Listen, like, they blew it up, like, right away. They're like, hey, this is Taguchi. <laughs> but then everyone's like, oh, who's this guy? And he said, like, Masked Horse, like, gave a promo after his match. He's like, when I was young, I was abandoned by my parents, and I was raised by horses. <laughs> then when I was, and this is the important part, when I was six years and nine months old, the horses abandoned me, and I started living with a pro wrestler. Oh, my good God. <laughs> And and then the very next show, after his match, he takes his mask off. He's like, Masked Horse is me, Taguchi. And we're just like, fucking, it's been two nights and you ruined it. <laughs> I was kind of hoping you could say he took the horse mask off and there was another horse mask. Like, it just keeps going. It, it, man, it's I, I almost wish that happened. <laughs> but it's like. The whole thing is the stupidest thing I've heard of in wrestling in a while. Oh, my God. But everyone loves it, and they're just like, yeah, sure, all right. <laughs> um, so, also, like, Taguchi, um, he also showed up a couple of Wrestle Kingdoms ago. Um, there, There's a wrestler we'll get to later um, named Kushida, who's, like, one of their best, like, junior heavyweights, mm -hmm. who he loves Back to the Future, and so for his entry, when he comes out, he always wears, like, a Marty McFly denim jacket with, like, bubble vest over it. Nice. Taguchi came out dressed up as, like, the shittiest Doc Brown possible <laughs> with him. Because <laughs> uh, that's just that's just Taguchi. Oh, that's um, so good. So that's one team. We have three more to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next match here is, um, this is the Chaos uh, stable team of Trent Beretta. Toriyanu and Tomohiro Ishii. Now, Trent Beretta, like I said, he used to be from um, from WWE. Mm -hmm. um, he's also wrestled in PWG. He's in the tag team with Chuck Taylor, known as Best Friends. Yes. And that they actually, uh, Best Friends was a part of New Japan's most recent tag team tournament. Um, and they did pretty well, and they almost went, went to the finals. Um but Beretta is a member of uh, has been a member of the Chaos Stable. I said he moved recently. He moved up from the heavyweight division, uh, to from the junior division to the heavyweight division, and he was actually he actually faced Kenny Omega for the United United States Championship, and he unfortunately lost. No one's gonna remember that he faced Kenny Omega because immediately after that match is when Chris Jericho challenged Kenny oh. for Wrestle Kingdom. Um, but so Beretta's here. Then I'm just going to Tomohiro Ishii, who is like the only way to describe it is that he's shaped like a fire hydrant. <laughs> Looking at that, you are not wrong. <laughs> he is his whole thing is that he's basically an indestructible person. Like he gets like thrown on his head, he like throws sick headbutts, and he's just like the toughest guy on the planet. Oh my god! Um, he rules, honestly. He's like no nonsense. Like he's he's got like the Vulcan eyebrows that like go downwards. He just looks like he's perpetually in a pissed off mood. <laughs> uh, but he's fucking great. Um, and they're teamed up with Toriano, who is the biggest f fucking clown on the planet. He looks very happy more to be so, here. <laughs> more so than Taguchi. Okay, let me tell you about fucking Toriano. All right, this is this is the part I've been waiting for, honestly. <laughs> Toriano is a snake oil salesman. <laughs> he he started out like he formed chaos with Shitsuke Nakamura, where he like kept his head shaved. He was just like kind of like like a thick, tough guy. And he just like frowned all the time. But as time went on, he just kind of just became like a silly, fun-loving dude who loved cheating in matches. <laughs> um, he literally does it like he faced a. Um, as part of like that TNA Wrestle Kingdom, um, he faced Rob Van Dam. Oh um, wow! He faced Rob Van Dam, and he saw Rob Van Dam do like his like yo RVD thumb point. Uh huh. And Tori, I was like, oh, that rules! I'm gonna do it, and he has done it ever since. <laughs> like he looked at the crowd and put his thumbs out and go Yano Toru, <laughs> and then he does like this. Sh 
And then he does like this shrug where he like wrinkles up like his chin okay. into like into his chest. I saw someone do a gif or just like a compilation of him shrugging his shoulders. I was making sure if that was him or not. All right, now I know. That's the to- <laughs> that's the Toriyanu shrug. Um, Toriyanu cheats in every single fucking match. He does low blows. He he does low blows. He carries a chair with him everywhere. He spits water in people's faces. He tapes pe- people's ankles together. <laughs> Um, one of the things he does is that, like, New Japan, like, their quarter turnbuckles are, like, the one pad that covers up all three. Yes. He, he can get the, he can undo those and pull it off in, like, less than two seconds. That's impressive. <laughs> like, Toriyanu does it with, like, the precision of, the of like, people who can disassemble and reassemble a gun while blindfolded. <laughs> And that's just that's just what he does. And Tori Toriyanu, uh, I'm going to talk more about him later because he has like a thing with this wrestler Minoru Suzuki. Um, Toriyanu is an idiot. I want you to know, okay? <laughs> Last year, Toriyanu and Tomohiro Ishii, um, they didn't win the because they one of the last things uh, New Japan does here is they have a tag team uh, tournament to determine who will challenge at Wrestle Kingdom. Mm-hmm. They did not win that tournament, but Torianu stole the trophies. Oh my god! And he stole the heavyweight tag team belts from the team. And he's like, "Hey guys, if you want these back, put us in the tag team title match." <laughs> and and it worked. And the tag team title match was a three way. So they didn't look at him and go, "You're fired. Get out of here. Give us no back our shit." No, it's <laughs> it's fine. It's Torianu. <laughs> Literally, that's it. It's what he does. <laughs> like, you know how I said the, like, oh, like, Bullet Club cheats? They they wish. The Bullet Club cheating is, like, n- it's, like, nothing compared to Toriyanu. Oh, my God. He's the best. It, it, he, no, he fucking rules. He really does. Um, And he just, and one of the things he does is that he, he makes DVDs and oh. sells them, but, and, like, he advertises them, like, he makes like these weird DVDs, like what involving chaos. So it's just like, here's the new chaos DVD. It's all of us fucking around in a grade school. <laughs> what? Or like, here's this, here's this other one. It's just like here, right here. It's just us drinking beer and going on a music park rides. <laughs> can you like legitimately buy these DVDs? Yes, you can. <laughs> these are real DVDs, and he always brings one out to like, uh, to like advertise it and. During his like when the when the when the ring announcer announces him, they make sure to be like, we're like, by the way, you can buy the new Chaos DVD or the new Chaos C D. Oh um, my god. And on being sold by Toriyanu. I definitely saw one time where like some he was coming down for a match, someone held out a crumpled wad of money and he sold his DVD that he had with him on the way to the that ring. That is so fucking good. Oh my god. <laughs> uh he actually had um he had a match with Colt Cabana in Ring of Honor recently, um, which was like, oh, man, like, I don't know how you feel about Colt Cabana. Um, I'm mainly from, more familiar with his, his podcast, and I kind of uh, don't really have much feeling of, towards him. Okay, that's fine. Um, it's just like Colt Cabana fancies himself to be like a comedy wrestler, and he had this match with Toriyanu, and I'm just like, oh, Colt, you wish you were funny. <laughs> Toriyanu's <laughs> much funnier. <laughs> Um, to the point that like Tori Toriano like held like they did a DVD exchange because like Colcabana has like his Wrestling Road Diaries DVD and like Toriano hands up his DVD and he's like yeah open it up Colt opens it up and it's full of powder and Toriano smacks it into his face. Oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> he did it when that was the start of the match and if he rolled him up and pinned him <laughs> on that that would have been the greatest comedy match ever. <laughs> But that's not the case, unfortunately. Um, so that's Tori. That's Toriyano. He's one of my favorite New Japan wrestlers. Oh, I see and why. Yeah. Okay. So well, you know, now the next team here is Hanson, Raymond Rowe, and Michael Elgin. Hanson and Raymond Rowe are War Machine yes. from Ring of Honor. And have you? Are you familiar with them yeah, that yeah, much? Uh, I'm, I'm a little familiar with them. Um, I've been trying to catch up on. I actually started to start watching Ring of Honor. And uh, I would see them pop up, and my sister and I were just kind of amazed by, like, you know, these two relatively big dudes doing some really cool, uh, you know, not doing straight-up flippy shit, but doing some cool flips in general. Uh, like, we were really impressed by uh, their ring work. Mm-hmm. 
No, they War Machine rules, honestly. And like, I think the current rumor is that they might be going to WWE soon. I heard um, about that. Yeah. Yeah. The the best part about that rumor is like, I think it was Raymond Rowe was offered a contract with WWE, but not Hanson. And Raymond Rowe is like, no, nah, dude, I'm not coming without Hanson. And so like, he turned him down. And now like a year later, now he's like, okay, fine. We'll take both of you. Oh, wow. And that's, that's loyal. Yes. That's great. Honestly. Um, and there's Michael Elgin, who I'm going to try to keep this this like podcast kind of like no bummers. But like, Mike, basically, Michael Elgin is kind of shitty. Oh, yeah. Nowadays. Yeah. Like it's it, it's it's like what it's sort of a thing where it's just like where like he he did not believe like believe like someone who was like saying like, hey, one of your trainees is harassing me. And he's like, well, that's not what I heard from him. Oh, um, so shit. everyone's kind of. Now nah, everyone's kind of turned on him, which is which is sad because Michael Elgin was like for so long it was like, hey, I want to go wrestle in Japan, and he never got to, and then he started he got a chance to wrestle Japan, New Japan, and he kind of got over with him and everything, and I was starting to turn the corner on him, and then this turned up. Um, this turned up by the way during like the recent tag team tournament, and War Machine like Michael Elgin actually was ta- tagging with uh Jeff Cobb who is Matanza on Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have it, like, check out, like, Jeff Cobb, honestly. He's oh, really fun. No, he, he's good. good. He's real good. He, he He's, like, freakish, freakish strength. Oh, yeah. Honestly. It, and it's, like, I it's to the point that, like, I wish Jeff Cobb was in this team with War Machine. Um, But it got to the point that, like, War Mach- what's, like, that stuff about Michael Elgin came out? War Machine, whenever they were leaving the ring, would look directly in the camera and just yell out, Hey, fuck Michael Elgin. Holy shit. No, they, they did not care, honestly. Uh, but now New Japan is teaming them up with Michael Elgin, so can't wait to see how this goes. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm all, I'm for War Machine in this. Michael Elgin's like, yeah, whatever, man. I hope your career fizzles out and goes nowhere. Um, <laughs> so the last team here is um, Taichi, Takashi, Izuka, and Zack Sabre Jr., um, Zack Sabre, you remember from the Cruiserweight Classic last yes. year. Yes. Yeah. According to the rumors that like uh, Zack Sabre Jr. was offered a WWE contract and he turned it down, which is why he did not win the Cruiserweight Classic, which is also why um, Kota Ibushi did not win the Cruiserweight Classic. Oh. And that's how he ended up. Yeah. Th- these are all rumors. Uh, rumors as to like why. It- but like that's basically how he ended up with TJ Perkins winning the whole thing. Oops. Yeah, oops. Um, Kota Ibushi, uh, we'll get to him in a little bit. Um, I love that man. But um, so, Zack Sabre, uh, these, this is the Suzuki Goon stable, um, which is led by Minoru Suzuki. And like I said, I'll get to him later. Um, Suzuki Goon actually has, uh, they, they, came, they were away from New Japan for like a year or so, um, wrestling in pro wrestling Noah. Um, but they've come back like recently and... This is basically just like kind of like um, Zack Saber actually joined Suzuki Goon recently, mm-hmm. um, uh, but here is his um, Takashi Izuka, who you see like on his hand, he has like this like metal like sort of thing. Yeah, it's that's basically just like kind of like a metal glove, and he just like put. He, see, the thing with Izuka, whenever he comes out, he always comes out in the crowd and basically just like running after and attacking people. <laughs> My God. And for whatever for whatever reason, he has like a sling around his neck, which is like he has nothing in it, but that's just what he does. But yeah, Azuka is just like this wild man who goes around and like has to be like tamed by his partners to actually attack their opponents. <laughs> it's it's pretty cool in like a dumb sort of, dumb sort of way. Um, tai Chi, I hate his guts so much. <laughs> he looks um, very punchable in that gear. Uh, <laughs> so. So the thing with Tai Chi is that like his his whole thing is that he his gimmick is essentially like oh I'm an idol I'm a singer or something he comes out with a microphone on a stand and he badly lip syncs to his music <laughs> and the thing is it's like even when like he was like focused on it he still sucked at it he just sucked <laughs> so bad at it nowadays he just mails it in so much but he like he like sings like two notes and then just kind of like does this shitty like smooth dance or whatever. Um, also, like, Tai Chi is, like, kind of in a weird place, because a few years ago, he actually, like, almost got fired, or he did get fired and got hired back from New Japan, 
um, for cheating on his spouse. Whoa. Which was like weird because it, 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 New Japan's like got this weird sort of thing where it's like their wrestlers like have to like appear available to like uh, fans. Otherwise, they don't appear appealing oh, to okay. them. Even it's 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 kind of like a thing that happens with like with like a I like and with women with like idols in Japan. It's like, oh, I'm a singer and everything, but like if I if they know you have a boyfriend, no one will be interested in you, even though they have like next to zero chance of ever giving with you. That little bit is what keeps them interested in you. It's it's a really back ass word system. Yeah. Um, but they kind of they kind of punished Tai Chi for that. He had to like take a pay cut in order to stay with New Japan. Holy shit. Um. Yeah, I like. I could, I I would have to like look. I'd research it a little bit more to like get into the details of it. But like, Tai Chi is not a great wrestler. I don't like him. <laughs> and it's weird because like Tai Chi's in here, but like, uh, you know who's a who's the second to come out of Suzuki Goon? Mm. Tachim Takam and Chinoku. Really? Yes. Takami Chinoku is the second in command for Suzuki Goon. By the way, Takami Chinoku looks exactly the same now as he did in 1997. <laughs> I, was about, I was legitimately about to ask, has that man started to age yet? <laughs> no, he hasn't. He he's still like in like the junior division and he still wrestles the same way. Wow. Like, he no, he's he's like at like vampire level of ageness, agelessness, honestly. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, but like, so he'll probably he'll Ta- Taco will probably show up at the New Japan Rumble, or he'll show up at this match as like uh, managing like uh, the Suzuki Goon team. Hmm. So, um, so with this belt, uh, well, this particular match is it always a trios uh, match? Yes. Okay. It it is a trios title. Um, and which is which is like it it's kind of like a, ever since Lucha Underground introduced trios titles, it's kind of been like. Uh, becoming a trend mm-hmm. in in wrestling and i'm not opposed to it like trios matches rule. yes yes they do um but like they just like announced like oh we're doing six bad tag team uh belts a couple years ago and the f- in th- the first champions actually were uh toriyanu and the briscoe brothers from ring of honor no way yes um they contended i forgot who they fought at like wrestle kingdom for it but that was the first uh never open weight tag team champions um, then the next night they lost the pelts. Oh, <laughs> and then they, they, like, here's the thing, like, uh, the, you notice how it's like, uh, it says, uh, Tamataga, Tagaloa and Balak Fale mm-hmm. are the fourth, the 14th champion. Yes. That's the 14th champion in two years. Yeah, how the hell does that happen? <laughs> A lot of just hot shotting the title <laughs> left and right. Like, like they have not treated like the belts like that seriously. Um, honestly, um, oh, okay. They, the, J- the Briscoe's of Toriano beat Bullet Club, which was Bad Luck Folly, Tama Tonga, and Yujiro Takahashi, who was like the only like Japanese member of Bullet Club. And I hate his guts. Um, <laughs> it, okay. You know what? I don't, I'm not going to have a chance to talk about him. So Yujiro Takahashi, his whole thing is that like, he, he comes out and he's like, he basically he's like oh i'm a pimp i come out with girls or whatever but it's like you see him you look at him and you see the way he asks you it's like that man has never fucked his entire <laughs> life <laughs> like like for him just like the definition of being a pimp is like oh i oh i bought a playboy and i didn't get embarrassed when i did it <laughs> Holy crap. He's like comes out. He's just like, oh, look at this girl. She's so sexy. Oh, I love her. And and it's just like, man, shut up. It, like, he he tries to like act like all cool and everything, and no one believes it. Honestly. Is that still his gimmick? <laughs> yes, <Wow. laughs> it's still his gimmick. And it's and it's just like get watered down more and more. And I'm just like, I see him come out, and I'm just like, man, fuck you, <laughs> go away. <laughs> I'm glad that uh, Tonga Loa is here. So Tama Tonga had Balak Fale have someone good to team there with. There you go. Honestly. Um, but yeah, like, so the, the never open weight six fan tiles, like, God, I'm looking at the record here. In the first year, in the first year of it, there were eight champions. That is some WCW shit, man. And <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's very much so. Like, this. They, they. I've seen like yo, know, the like it was like one, and then the next night it was slingshot, and then the first defense it was slingshotted, then again, and it's just, uh, it was. It, I it kind of sucks, but whatever. Um, it, it it's it's a belt and this gauntlet is a way to get a bunch of guys on the show, and 
it's it's a gauntlet match, so it's gonna go really quickly and with eliminations. It's basically just like these guys come in, do their thing. There's not gonna be a lot of psychology. It's whatever. It'll be a clusterfuck fun match. Yes. Um. Okay. Um. Man, that was that was like 45 minutes on one match. <laughs> there was a lot to talk about. There was, there was a lot to get through. Okay. Next match: Kota Ibushi versus Cody. Just Cody, not Cody Rhodes, because. He's not allowed to use that name, apparently. That is messed up. No, apparently WWE owns the copyright on the, the Rhodes name. Even cause, and he can't use it because like, his actual last name is Runnels. So it's it's really bad, yeah. honestly. Um, so this is Kota Ibushi versus Cody. And this was originally going to be for the Ring of Honor title. Um, but Cody just lost the Ring of Honor title to Dalton Castle. Hell yeah. And... I don't. I I just realized you you're like yeah. I'm trying to catch up on Ring of Honor. Well, spoiler. <laughs> no, that I knew that because like Dalton Castle is uh one of the reasons I want to start watching Ring of Honor. <laughs> Dalton Castle rules. Yes, honestly. he does. <laughs> and he actually he actually showed up in uh, New Japan uh for for a couple of shows last year. And Taguchi was one of his boys. Actually, oh, that's great. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> Taguchi was one of his boys because like you know Taguchi will do anything. Yes. Um. But this originally was for the Ring of Honor title. Now it's just a regular match. And Kota Ibushi was kind of like, he kind of threw some shade towards Cody. He's like, yeah, it was, he came, because Cody came and challenged him. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'll put the Ring of Honor title on the line. And now he lost it. And Cody's like, yeah, I don't get why he made that challenge and then lost the title. <laughs> he he just kind of was just like, very politely, but also to be like, yo, Cody ain't shit. Um, <laughs> Kodobushi also recently was like on like a podcast with um with Kushida and I promise we'll get to Kushida later. Um where Kodobushi's like, yeah, I don't have hobbies. I don't understand it. Why do people like golf? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> he also, I think he also like said, I hate fishing, it's so boring. <laughs> Kodobushi just loves wrestling, honestly. Seems like a no nonsense kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. Kodobushi, by the way, like turned down. Like this is like rumors again. Turned down like three separate offers for WWE. Wow. Like for for like five years, and they're like, okay, how about three years? He's like, no. He's like, just give us one year. And he's like, no. And like immediately after that, Kota Ibushi was wrestling for New Japan, um, as Tiger Mask W, as in the same Tiger Mask from the anime that yeah. came out last yeah. year. <laughs> so Kota Ibushi turned down. A multi-million dollar deal <laughs> with WWE to wrestle as the anime man. That is on, so on New Japan show. Awesome. <laughs> Kodobushi <laughs> cares about wrestling. He cares about wrestling as an art, and that's proof mm-hmm. of it. Kodobushi also has like kind of a weird strained relationship with Kenny Omega. Um, because they used to be a tag team, and they were their tag team name was the Golden Lovers. That's great. That's a good name. Um, and, yeah, it is because like they they would tag together and they tag together in like DDT and other places. Um, they have not faced each other in New Japan yet, actually, but they have been teasing it super super hard. Um, there was actually um, I think it was a couple years ago. Um, Kota Ibushi was challenging AJ Styles for the IWGP title. Mm-hmm. Um, and he like got because like his like finisher was like a Phoenix Splash. He got up on the top rope and Kenny was like at ringside for the match and Kenny jumped up on the apron like he was about to like try and like like attack Kota Ibushi but he like stopped and they like locked eyes and Kenny just like very calmly got off the apron Whoa! and Kota just kind of like shook his head in disappointment but it was just enough time for AJ Styles to counter him and win the match. Um, and then afterwards, like this wasn't publicized much, but there I saw it. Like there was a photo of Kenny sitting outside the arena by himself in the rain, like his head down, with like this whole like God, I can't believe I did that. Oh look on his shit! Face. Um, then when like Kenny Omega lost uh at the lost the uh, the finals of the G One Climax, he encountered Kota Ibushi backstage, and Kota like looked at him, and Kenny's like no no and just like walked past him and the young bucks are with him and the young bucks turned to the camera that was following him it's like no you guys got to get out of here get out of here right now holy shit so there is potential there and it's like 
a lot of people said that like Okada and Kenny Omega was like one of the best matches from Wrestle Kingdom last year. It was a very good match, but I am waiting. I am like nail biting, waiting for Kotobushi versus Kenny Omega because that's it's been brewing. It hasn't been like on like an official state, but they've just been teasing it, just like the littlest bit, the littlest bit, and I really want to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like a uh, Kotobushi rules. Um, he is he Kotobushi is who you should turn to when people ask is wrestling art absolutely wrestling is art <laughs> uh, but yeah that match is just like whatever i hope kodobushi wins that <laughs> cuz cody's like it i like what cody's like doing cuz like he's trying to make like independent wrestling like to prove that like you can make it you can make a career out of independent wrestling without wwe yes. i just think like he's kind of insufferable at times about it um, like, have you seen the thing recently about how, like, Cody and the Young Bucks are going to be organizing their own indie show in, like, a 10,000-seat arena sometime next yes. year? Yeah. Like, stuff like that is cool, but at the same time, Cody is, like, this kind of, like, this kind of, like, a uh, kind of, like, a inoffensive Republican kind of, like, <laughs> viewpoint sort of thing. <laughs> Like, like, definitely Cody in the past has been like, oh, I love South Park. And, like, if you don't eat meat, you're not a man. I'm oh, just like, oh, come on, man. But come on, man. Fucking chill yeah. out. The best thing is, like, he lives in Marietta, Georgia, which is literally, like, ten minutes away from where I live. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, so I was just like, oh, I hope I don't run into him at, like, Walgreens <laughs> or something. <laughs> Uh, did you see like when he like dyed his hair? He dyed his hair, like, platinum yeah, blonde recently? Yeah, it looks terrible. It looks so bad. It really does. It looks so bad. Uh, also like that thing he did like have you seen like where he like he had the ring of our championship and he made like oh, like the actual like, action, ring <laughs> the, ac- the ring of honor was... like i have never yelled fuck you at a tv and it's in a most it was so annoying i'm just like man cody what do you shut up man i hate you <laughs> so yeah like like cody's like He's insufferable, but, like, I kind of like what he's doing. But at the same time, it's like, I hope Coda just wipes the floor with him. <laughs> I'm having opinions about this inf- uh, with this informative thing and whatever. I, I, it, it's, it's been a good mix so far. It's been all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Yes. Um, the Tag Team Championship. So, with uh, David Boy Smith Jr. and Lance Archer versus Sonata and... King of Darkness Evil. I want him to uh, win immediately. Just the fact that his name is King of Darkness Evil. <laughs> I'll get to, I'll get to them in a second. But let's talk about the champions, yes. which is David Boy Smith Jr. and Lance Archer. They are the same ones from WWE. David Boy Smith Jr. was the one who teamed up with Tyson Kidd, mm-hmm. and they were the Heart Dynasty. Lance Archer was like in like ECW back when it was. But uh, but it was still around and anything. It's like was he Lance Hoyt at that time? Yes, he was Lance Hoyt. Um, but like the two of them are actually members of Suzuki Goon. Okay, no Suzuki Stable. Um, and like David, <laughs> the big thing that I remember recently, David Way Smith Jr. is um they he showed up with like this tracksuit that was like it was all white oh. and it looked like weirdly like. If crushed velvet could be reflective, he was wearing it. <laughs> he looked he looked like he looked like someone's Grand Theft Auto character, honestly. Like every like the only thing missing is like, did he come out with sunglasses so he can be straight up? Yes, he what? had sunglasses okay, so on. Why wouldn't he's he? Fucking Doctor Tracksuit from Giant Bomb, then like. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> he's just Doctor Tracksuit. <laughs> he's Doctor Tracksuit with a mouth guard in. Oh fucking a. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're the tag team champs. Um, Lance Archer has also started doing this thing. He started doing it during the tag team tur- tournament um, where he would have like a bottle of water. He would take a sip, immediately spit it on the crowd. Then another sip and spit it. Just sip, spit, sip, spit, sip, spit. Gross. Throw away the empty bottle. Take out another <laughs> one. Sip, spit, sip, spit. He had like three bottles and he would do that. Like It definitely reeked of just like, oh, I'm going to do this. The boys are going to get a laugh out of it. <laughs> Um, Mission accomplished. But yeah, like they're, yeah. Um, so they're facing Sonata and King of Darkness Evil. Now, they're both members of Los Ingobernables, which is, uh, which is the stable that uh, Tetsuya Naito is the leader of. Okay. Um, 
I'll get more into that like when I get to Naito in the main event. But um, King of Darkness Evil is someone who uh, came from that uh, the Young Lions program. He was like a I forget what like his name was, but he wrestled in like America, uh, did like some matches in like Ring of Honor and like PWG, and he came back as King of Darkness Evil, who literally has like a giant scythe. Hell yes, he has like. A laser, like he puts finger lasers on and projects them in the arena. Oh my god! And yes. he has like a, and he has a, and he wears like a giant like hood on and everything. Um, and yeah, like he's he his catchphrase is everything is evil. Oh my god! <laughs> no, it's the campiest bullshit. I love it. Um, <laughs> and now Sonata, Sonata wrestled in TNA actually. Really? Um. He wrestled in TNA. Um, not he wasn't part. He had to come up through like the Young Lions program, in New Japan. He actually wrestled for uh, Great Buddha's uh, Wrestle One, I believe. Uh, but in like uh, in TNA, he was like in like the X division. He had like blonde hair, and he was like this really like happy dude. Um, okay, did you ever when did you ever see uh, the YouTube show TNA made called Spin Cycle? No. It was like basically like a comedy talk show. <laughs> Uh, where like it was like Ethan Carter the Third, Rockstar Spud, uh, and the Bro Man. Oh my God! Oh, uh, and Jeremy Borash just like talking about dumb shit and just like big idiots for like twenty minutes, <laughs> and then Sonata would show up at the end and just like be instantly cooler than everyone else. <laughs> like at one point, like they were like having a talent show, and Sonata came out dressed as a magician and made everyone disappear. <laughs> Or, like, another time they were, like, playing Pictionary, and Sonata, bring, at the end, brings out, like, a like an easel and a giant pad, and in, like, 60 seconds drew a perfect caricature of himself with, like, color and everything. <laughs> um, But, like, he was, like, uh, but, like, he actually showed up. Uh, Sonata showed up in New Japan um, in the middle of last year and interfered in Tetsuya Naito's uh, championship match against Okada, and... and and that was his debut, and Naito beat Okada for the title. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but Sonata's uh, his uh, sub his sub nickname is Cold Skull. Oh, that's great! And he has like a baseball bat. He always wears a tank top, and he has this like skull mask with horns on it. Um, also, if you write there his name, it is supposed to be in all caps. The oh, same yeah? way evil <laughs> evil is in all caps. Like you if you. New Japan like does like shows like a like a like a bumper on the bottom with like the names of like yo so versus this people versus these people Sonata and Evil are always in all caps and it's always written in English so it's just this just like so and so versus Evil <laughs> perfect <laughs> Evil um actually uh had a uh heavyweight title shot against Okada because during the G1 climax he actually beat him oh shit um. Yeah, um, I probably should ask like this point because I've mentioned it several times. Uh, do you know what the G one climax? Uh, is? that's what it's like their their round robin tournament, right? Yes, it's their heavyweight uh, round robin tournament. They actually have several of them for different divisions throughout the year. Um, but yeah, it is like the round robin tournament lasts like a month and a half, and during that, um, one of the few losses Okada had was against King of Darkness Evil, which led to like uh, I think it was in October. Evil was like, hey, I beat Okada clean in a match. I deserve a championship match. And yeah. And he faced them. I haven't had a chance to watch the match, but I heard it was really good. But he did not win, obviously. Mm. Now, the World Tag League, which is what just happened, is another. Like, It was a tag team round robin tournament. And Sonata and Evil actually won it. Um, But they were also like, though, during that, Sonata and Evil, along with the other the another Los Angeles member of uh, Bushi, mm-hmm. who's like the only masked wrestler there, they were the never open weight six man champions. Um and in the finals of the tag tournament they faced uh Tamatonga and Tangaloa. Um and they beat them. But then like at the next show, uh they lost the never open weight um six man belts to them. So they not they've not gotten a rematch for those belts because they're having this match here for the tag team. Title. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, that's what's going what's going on with them. Uh, now, uh, next next one, but never ignore the fact that never open that open weight is misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> 
this happens occasionally. Like I definitely um a few years ago, like I there was a promo like they had like a promo image for the G1 climax that had a typo, so it was it was it said the G1 Silmax. Nice. <laughs> um so this one is from Never Open Championship, a hair versus hair match. Uh, between Minoru Suzuki and Hiroki uh, Go. So I, I, now, I immediately have a question because it looks like Suzuki doesn't have a lot of hair. Look up a picture of Minoru Suzuki. You will see he does have hair. Okay. It's just very short, but he has it like cut, so it's like wisps of wind in his oh, hair. Oh God! And he has this, <laughs> and you, and he has this really shitty mohawk in the. Oh, back. I see it. <laughs> now the thing is, though, Minoru Suzuki, when he was wrestling in the early '90s, had very nice hair. Um, like beautiful, like hair, like to the point it was like um when I was talking about like uh La Sombra earlier, Andrade Cien Almas having really nice hair. It was at that at that level. Um, now I'll get to Suzuki in a second, but uh the Never Openweight Championship, like I said, was meant to be like you know kind of like an upcoming like uh the like champions upcoming wrestler sort of mm-hmm. thing. It kind of evolved into this title. Where in every match wrestling is real. Oh, like every time there's a never open weight championship match, it's basically these guys are gonna hit each other as hard as possible. There's gonna be like neck drops off of top ropes. It's always just like the most intense like matches. Yikes. Just like, like it it's it's fucking great. Honestly, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun to watch. But also, you're just like, oh my god, please tell these men wrestling's fake. <laughs> Oh, it's like, oh my god, please stop. Uh, so, that's kind of like been the calling card of the Never Openweight Championship. And Minoru Suzuki won it recently. Um, so, Minoru Suzuki has a long history, actually. Um, first of all, you, there's what you have to know about Minoru Suzuki is he likes three things. He likes wrestling. He likes fishing. He likes the anime One Piece. And that's it. Perfect. <laughs> He loves one. He loves One Piece so much they literally put him in an episode. No way. <laughs> yes, he was like an announcer for like some uh, a wrestling episode they did. Um, but like he was, he but like the thing with Suzuki is he actually started out as a mixed martial artist. Um, he was one of the founders of like the promotion Pan Crace, uh, in the '90s, which was basically like this weird sort of they call it hybrid wrestling, where it was like they were like worked wrestling matches. But they were like they were portrayed like MMA matches, essentially. Oh wow! So it's just like if so, like if like MMA matches had like you know were like had like fixed results like wrestling. That's what that's what Pancrase was essentially. Um, but like he's like a very accomplished like mixed martial artist, and he moved over into wrestling. Minoru Suzuki is the most miserable man on the planet. <laughs> like. <laughs> He's he's intensely like scary. Uh, he chokes people out. Like his finisher is essentially a sleeper hold, <laughs> but he makes it he makes it work. Honestly, um, he's just like nasty. Like, like I say that he has like very nice hair mm-hmm. uh, back in the nineties. Now he has this like wretched thing, and it's just like <laughs> it, him like doing that is like the same as like Rock Lee having the weights on. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> He's just like it's the only way to inhibit his power. <laughs> um But yeah, and he like um you know what actually uh let me see. Mizuru Suzuki's theme song, by the way, is is amazing as well. Um it it's so much that like people sing along with it, actually. Oh, I love when that happens. I love that so much. Yeah, um it's it's like a you know what, I'll I'll link you to it so you can listen to listen to it later. Um, so Minoru Suzuki is a leader of like the Suzuki Goon stable. Mm-hmm. Um, now recently, believe it or not, Minoru Suzuki's biggest opponent, and I swear this will tie into Goto in a bit, his biggest opponent has been Toru Yanu. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Like a few years ago, like Toru Yanu just basically started shit with Minoru Suzuki. Um, and I think it way it started was that Minoru Suzuki was in a position to like uh, get into the finals of the G1 climax, mm-hmm. and it was like the last like day before like the finals, and he was facing Toriyanu, who was like completely out of the running. <laughs> Toriyanu beat him. Oh my god! And eliminated him, 
And Minoru Suzuki basically was just like, well, now I have to kill him. <laughs> uh, this led to a match, uh, a tag team match at Wrestle Kingdom, where Toriyanu got, had to pick uh, his own partner. He picked... Uh, <laughs> He picked the great Muda oh, as his partner. That's so cool. <laughs> which was just is really cool, but also it's just like Toriyama is the kind of person to pick to pick but pick um Great Muda as his partner and not realize how much of an error he's making. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just, it's essentially just like, yeah, you know what? I'm my partner's gonna be this un uncaged tiger. It'll be great. This totally won't go poorly for me. <laughs> So, Minoru Suzuki has been feuding on and off with Toriyanu because, like, Toriyanu will not leave him alone. <laughs> so, and, like, the Wrestle Kingdom after that one, Minoru Suzuki had Suzuki was challenging Toriyanu. And it's like, yeah, Toriyanu, go find, go find uh, partners. So, Toriyanu's partners were three guys from Pro Wrestling Noah, um, two of which were actually. Um, you know TM61 from uh, NXT? Yes. Those two guys. Oh, wow. And, uh, God, the guy who was, like, the Noah champion. I forget his name at this at this point. I'll look it up in a little bit. But Toriyaru brought them in. And, and uh, you know, Suzuki's like, all right, that's how it's going to be. Um, Two days later, Pro Wrestling Noah had a show. Suzuki Goon showed up and beat up everybody. <laughs> Toriyanu caused that, and for an entire year, Pro Wrestling Noah was dismantled from the ground up by Suzuki Goon. Oh like God. within a month, Suzuki Goon won every one of their titles. <laughs> I was just, I was just like, yeah, and Pro Wrestling Noah isn't shit. Come take your titles back. You can't. <laughs> um, now keep in mind, also, in Pro Wrestling Noah, um, Minoru Suzuki was like fighting Marfuchi. That's the name. Of, that was the name of their champion. Um, the guy who like showed up mm-hmm. had a Noah show. Everyone was getting beat up. Toriyanu showed up at a Noah show to help. Them. Oh God! <laughs> he showed up in like a jogging suit, and the storyline was like, "Yeah, I was running a marathon nearby, and I heard you guys needed help." <laughs> and it all it was specifically just to antagonize Minoru Suzuki. <laughs> He just and then what like an and then like Suzuki has like a match. This keeps happening. Suzuki like has a match with Toriyanu and kicks his ass, and then Toriyanu just starts shitting up with him again <laughs> later. Um, which led up to most recently, um, at Minoru Suzuki put the never he was he put no Toriyanu in his latest uh, series of starting shit with Minoru Suzuki. Stole the never open weight championship oh, no. from him. And he's like, all right, fine, we'll have a match. They had a bull rope death match, which is just like they just had like, you know, just a rope holding them together by the wrist. Yes. No special rules or anything. But it was basically so Toriano couldn't escape. And Toriano, for like 15 minutes, just had the absolute shit kicked out of him. <laughs> like, like before he kind of like got beaten up by Minoru Suzuki and he kind of like got would like get away. This was just like, no, there was nothing left of Toriyanu after this match. It was like, it was like, I was just like, finally it's over. Minoru Suzuki has beaten him and maybe Toriyanu will stop. He probably won't actually Do you think he's make an appearance during this match. Oh, fucking. I hope not. <laughs> I mean, it says that, like, it says here that Chaos and Suzuki Good are barred from ringside. Yes. So, um, the thing, though, with that, though, is that, like, after the match, Minoru Suzuki, you know, because he hates Toriyanu, is beating him up after the match. And Hiroki Goto comes out to help to help uh, Toriyanu and fight off Minoru Suzuki. Now, Hiroki Goto, there's a lot with him. He is, like, probably one of the most tragic figures in Re- New, J- Re- New Japan's recent history. Mm. Um, Hiroki Goto is like a really solid wrestler that has never won a championship. Oh shit! Um, not like, well, he has. I think he's been like Intercontinental Champion and like Tag Team Champion. Um, but he has challenged for the heavyweight title plenty of times and never been able to do it. He's like one of those guys who's just like, when he gets there, he like he is almost there, and then he chokes, and it's awful. And I feel so bad for him when it mm-hmm. happens. Um. 
But the thing is, like, his his thing is like is is essentially just like it's it's basically like he's a dynasty warrior's character. He looks like it in the best way. No, he really is. Like he bas- he basically fancies himself as like a samurai to the point that there is video footage of him training and it's him sitting under a water. Perfect. Oh man, <laughs> this guy's awesome. He is. But like the thing is it's like he always like gets there and he like just chokes and he never does it. To the point that he challenged Okada for the IWGP title like last year and he lost. And immediately afterwards, like Okada said, hey, Nakamura's gone. Come join my stable. Oh, wow. And it seems like kind of cool. Like, it's just like, oh, Goto's like the second in command in chaos now. But like, if you read between the lines of it, it's kind of emasculating because it's like, oh, he couldn't. It's basically like, well, you can't beat him, join him sort of situation. And it's it sucks because it's like Goto's really good. He's a great wrestler. He's like really like stiff and everything. But, like, he just can't, like, I forgot Goto existed over the past year, actually. Oh, wow. Like, he just, like, faded into the background and sucks. That's a bummer. Yeah, it is. But, um, so now he's having this match against Minoru Suzuki, and it's a hair versus hair match. And if you look at Goto, Goto has very nice Yes, he hair, does. Honestly. Um, he has, he stands to have a lot more to lose than Minoru Suzuki in this yes. match. Um, but, like, I just... I hope he can do it, honest. I hope Goto can do it here. But also, I'm kind of like, I want Goto to lose because it's like, if he loses, he essentially like hits rock bottom. Yeah. With this, like, because it's like, this would be like, he hits rock bottom, he loses his hair, and maybe he could have like some sort of character change because he's kind of like stale like recently, and I, I want good things from him. I really do. Mm-hmm. And also, it's just like, Minoru Suzuki does not have a lot to lose with having his head, head shaved. <laughs> If any, if anything, it will give him more power. <laughs> um, but I ex- totally expect this match to be just like the one where you're just like, oh my god, stop! Oh my god, stop! Oh my god! Like go to like what a go to finishers is like. He does like a neck drop onto his knee, ah! and I would not be surprised if he attempts that off the top. Ah, oh god! <laughs> Ugh, sorry, I'm drinking some water, so I'm getting, whew, getting into it. Oh, here. You're kicking ass, dude. Thank you. Um, all right. Before I go further, any questions, concerns, or anything you need cleared up? Uh, well, I guess the big thing is uh, you, you've been bringing up Noah a lot. Is Noah like the developmental league or just the promotion they work with? Oh, no, no. Oh, my goodness. You have no idea how harsh it is that you that I said that you said Noah. Oh, is I, I don't know. I, I. Oh, no, it's fine. Well, it, Pro Wrestling Noah is like was formed in like the early 2000s. By a bunch of wrestlers who left All Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, Because I think it was like All Japan had like some sort of like a change in like leadership and a bunch of wrestlers didn't Mm -hmm. like it. So they left at much like Noah's Ark. (laughs) That's why it's called that. Oh, okay. And they went and formed Noah. And Noah was like a big time like company in like the mid 2000s to the point that they they sold out the Tokyo Dome with like 60,000 people. That's awesome. Yeah, nowadays they're lucky to sell out like a two thousand seat arena, so. <laughs> and it's it's yeah they've fallen because like they've fallen real bad honestly, and it's kind of it's kind of a shame because it's like this used to be like a big time company, um, so like K- Kenta Kobashi was like what is like one of their like management people, but he's like you know they've they've been struggling and mm, excuse me. New Japan actually sent uh, the Suzuki Good stable over there just to like help them out, like because they had like a working relationship with them, and they're like, "Go help them out, help them get going," and it didn't really work out. And Noah had like a change in like a uh, a change in management, and they were bas- they basically dissolved the relationship with New Japan because of that, and then mm-hmm. Suzuki, Suzuki Good came back to New Japan. So, but now Noah actually has like a working relationship with TNA. Which is like ugh, really like tugging on the collar for that one. Yeah. Um. But like, it's I think like Eddie Edwards is the Noah champion currently. Actually. No way. Yeah. Um. Excuse me. Uh. But yeah, that's the deal with like promoting Noah. It's like it was it essentially was like the num- number two, if not the number one company in Japan. 
they've fallen on hard times, like really hard times recently, and it's a bummer. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Anything else you need to clear up? Uh, I I think that was just it. I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm keeping up pretty well so far. Okay. So now, junior heavyweight title, um, a four-way match here. Marty Skrull, Will Ospreay, Kushida, and Hiromu Takahashi. Um, I'm assuming like you're somewhat familiar with Marty Skrull. Mm-hmm. Yeah. British dude, loves umbrellas, join 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 Bullet Club, whatever. Yeah, all all the villain stuff. All the villain stuff, you know, he's like he he's on being the elite and his thing now is that he sings like sings like songs badly or whatever. <laughs> I I feel bad because it's like that show, it's like everyone thinks it's like really great. Like, have you watched it at all? I, I've only caught clips. I've never watched an entire episode. I mean, it looks like a bunch of guys like having fun, but it's like it's like comedy is on like the level of like first year film student sort of jokes. <laughs> I mean, like if, if you take it for what it is of like, you know, it's like here's these dudes just kind of like they're just kind of like fucking around, you know, before and after shows with their friends. That's cool. But it's like. A lot of people are like, oh, it's like the greatest thing ever. I'm just like, mm, let's back it up a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, Marty Skrull is the current IWGP junior heavyweight champion. Um, and he's facing Will Ospreay, um, who is a member of the Chaos Stable now, actually. Um, have you seen much of Will Ospreay? Yes, I have. Yeah. He had, like, uh, actually in the best of Super the Super Juniors tournament last year, he had that one match with, like, Ricochet where it was just, like, nonstop flips and it pissed off Vader for whatever reason. Yeah, that's actually uh, whenever I have friends who I know aren't really in super uh, uh, up-to-date on wrestling or don't really pay attention to a lot of wrestling, I'm like, you should probably see this match. Just because it's so, it, it's so attention-grabbing. So, like, I like to show friends that match all the time, that Will Ospreay Ricochet match. Oh yeah, it's a it's a fun it's a fun match, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. But it's like and to and to like people to watch the wrestling, like wow, this is like so good. And if you watch a lot of wrestling, you're just like, mm, they did that PWG last month. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not to downplay it, but it's just like they just had a bigger audience for it, and then it just got a lot of attention. Yeah. Um, and they're also facing Kushida, uh, who, like I said, like you could see him here. The picture yep. of him here loves Back to the Future. So much so that, like, when New Japan had their shows in uh, California, uh, part of, like, I think Kushida stayed an extra day or two because he wanted to find all the locations in- where they filmed Back to the Future. That's so great. And he, like, took pictures next to, like, the Burger King that was in, like, Back to the Future 2 and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> to the, it, He loves Back to the Future so much to the point that, like, I think it was Wrestle Kingdom 8. His entrance is he literally came out in a DeLorean. That's so good. Oh my god! And That's... he used to he used to t- team up with uh, Alex Shelley actually from a uh, really yep. And their their uh, team name was the Time Splitters. Fucking a! This that is commitment to the gimmick. That is so <laughs> good. Oh no! It, it was the the logo was like the the Back to the Future font and everything. It wasn't subtle. That's so um, good. <laughs> but Alex Shelley does the rest of New Japan now for whatever reason. I'm not sure what's up with that. I think it's because I think that might be because like he reformed the Motor City Machine Guns with um what's his name uh oh oh shit oh we should know this we should <laughs> we oh my should. god <laughs> uh not Petey Williams uh shit uh I'm really gonna have to Google it yeah I I just the moment you brought up I blanked Motor City Machine Gun uh Chris Saban God Chris damn it. Saban yes oh my god oh I'm embarrassing uh anyways. <laughs> But uh, Kushida has actually been, like, the top, like, junior heavyweight uh, in New Japan, honestly. Um, and he's and he's and he's been really great, uh, but he's, you know, he lost the title uh, recently. Uh, he actually was, um, Kushida was, like, one of the, was the one who won the junior heavyweight title off of Kenny Omega. And that was, like, his last, Kenny Omega's last junior heavyweight match before he moved on to the heavyweight division. Mm. Um and he's all, and they're also facing uh, in this match Hiromu Takahashi, who is another case of like a, and he came back from an excursion with like a weird gimmick. Um, he, he's one with the the cat plushie, right? Daryl. His name is Daryl. Daryl. Okay. Daryl is the great. So Hiromu Takahashi like uh, was going under like his real name in 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 the United States and everything. He came back as the his full name is Ticking Time Bomb Hiromu Takahashi. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and his thing is like, he's, I don't know if you see his matches, but like 
he does like the he does like moves to the outside with like no regards whatsoever as to what happens to him. Oh no. He like does sentons and like where it's just like, oh no one's gonna fucking catch him. Oh no. <laughs> Like he, he just like throws himself around and everything, and he actually came back from America last year. And at last year's Wrestle Kingdom was his him returning to New Japan, and he won the junior heavyweight title from Kushida in that match. Actually, uh, him and Kushida actually have like kind of a history with each other. Um, but yeah, Hiromu Takahashi, like he's he's very very weird. Um, and actually, like uh, so here's a, another reason to kayfabe hate bad luck Fale. During the G1 Climax, Bad Luck Fale went out, grabbed Daryl off of the announce table, and tore him apart and oh, sent shit. him flying everywhere. It was the biggest heel move, honestly. Like, <laughs> like the announcers were screaming. Like, it was like he legit <laughs> he was like he legitimately murdered a cat on television. <laughs> but it's okay. Daryl went to the hospital. He's fine now. Um, he's married and has kids. So <laughs> Takahashi doesn't come out with Daryl anymore, but the explanation is no, he's he's at home with his family. Oh, that's that's great. <laughs> yeah. And so Takahashi just on like his jacket, he like points out his Daryl pins on it. Um Hiromu Takahashi is a member of Los and Gobernables as well. Um and I'm, like once again, like I promise I'll get into Los and Gobernables. It'll be more appropriate getting into it in the uh the main event match. Um but yeah, that's a four way match, and it was set up by like <sighs> I forget get like what it was like uh, it was after like um was it best of super junior it was just like a match where like i think it was will osprey had um had the junior title and marty Skrull beat him for it and then kushida like came out and was like arguing with them and then takahashi came out for some reason wearing mma gloves and like a fencing mask to fight <laughs> <laughs> which he then wore to the press conference the next day <laughs> Hiromu Takahashi's a huge weirdo, and I love him for it, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're having a four-way match for the title, and I'm sure there will be plenty of flippy shit in that match. I'm excited. <laughs> yes. Okay, so next one. IOGP Intercontinental Championship. Hiroshi T- Tanahashi versus Jay White. Now, Tanahashi, like, the best way to explain him, he's Japanese John Cena. Like, oh shit, he is the guy in New Japan. Like, he has main evented almost every uh Wrestle Kingdom for the past like five or six years. Good for him, yeah. Like, he's just he's just the guy. He's just like he has he has beautiful, wavy hair. He's like everyone, everyone loves him. He's the ace of the promotion and everything. Um, and he's the current Air Continental champion. Um, he loves New Japan and and everything. And it's just he's a really good wrestler. Um, and, but like I said, he's always been, he's, he's basically like you, you beat Tanahashi. It's a huge fucking deal. Um, Toriyano has beaten Tanahashi, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> he beat him in two minutes what by grabbing fuck? his hair and pulling him down and pinning him. What a dick. <laughs> oh no. He like, he beat him like that. And Tanahashi's like throwing a fit in the ring and Toriyano walks by the camera and does his shrug. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah like tanahashi is just like he's been like like i said like everyone loves him he's always like in the main event um and he's the current intercontinental like champion um now he's facing jay white jay white is from new zealand and he was a young lion and this is him coming back from his excursion uh he wrestled in like ring of honor and like i think in like cmll and he came back as I can't air quote this enough. Switchblade Jay White. Oh no. <laughs> Where like he he like they should like the preview video for him was him like in a room with like a switchblade knife carving like hash marks into a book and everything. It's like uh, who's that guy who like carved hash marks to, to himself on from Batman? Oh uh, um um oh shit is it Zaz? Yes, Mister Zaz. It it was kind of like that only a little less violent. Um, but yeah, like Jay White. Um, went to like went to America and everything, and he came back. And his first match back is he's challenging Tanahashi for the Air Continental Title at at New Japan at at a Wrestle Kingdom, which is a pretty huge deal, honestly. Because yeah. <laughs> like last I remember from Jay White, 
he was like in like black trunks in the opening match losing losing to like Jushin Thunder Thunder Liger. <laughs> and then like, he's gone for a while, but like now he's grown his hair out. And now he comes out here in like a leather jacket and he's and now he's talking. And I'm just like, holy shit, Jay White, you have an extremely New Zealand accent. <laughs> Well, so I, like, I gotta say, like, so far with matches you've shown, you, you we've talked about so far, this is the one I'm kind of the most interested in, just due to the pedigree of Tanahashi and mm-hmm. Jay White coming in with uh, kind of a kind of to prove himself. Yeah, that's that's basically what's going on with this one. Um, I'm interested in it because it's like here's the thing: Tanahashi is like over forty now, and he's been like he's been at the top for like so long, and it's just like uh, he. I wouldn't be surprised if he lost to Jay White here because it's like Tanahashi could take the loss and he'll mm-hmm. he'll still sell a million T-shirts. He'll he'll still be like the greatest guy in the company. And Jay White's got like nothing, nothing, uh, nothing but everything to gain from it. Um, but yeah, I want to see like just like, all right, Jay White has a fairly high profile match against the biggest one of the biggest guys in New Japan. I want to see what happens here because it's like. This is New Japan putting a lot of faith in their Young Lions program. Yeah. I hope it works out for for that. Totally. All right. Uh, Any questions so far before we're getting into, like, the the main event matches? I think I am ready for the main event matches. Okay. So, U.S. Heavyweight Championship match, Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho. Um, That is insane. I know. It's it's wild, especially considering that, like, Chris Jericho wrestled at WrestleMania this year. Yeah. Um, I think the last person to like do something like this actually was Cody Rhodes. Cause like he was in WrestleMania. Then he was like at final battle. And he also was at wrestle in wrestle kingdom, like all within like one year, like uh, of each of it, of each other. So it's like, it's, it's pretty wild, but also just like, I'm not sure if like WWE's pissed off at him about it or not, or if they'll let him back or whatever. But have you like seen how Chris Jericho looks like now? Yes. Yeah, he's like reinvented himself all over again. Yep. Uh but yeah, like a uh, Kenny Omega. God. Um, I know you know all about Chris Jericho. I know you you have your own list from it. So. Yes, I do. I do have a list <laughs> <laughs> of that. So. I think this is just like a one off for it against like Kenny and did you see the press conference where Chris like threw a table? At yeah, Kenny Omega? it was fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, like it was oh it's for just like a cha- a match that like came out of nowhere, like this just this there's a lot of there's a lot of like like bad blood with this, like just out of nowhere. Like literally, like Chris Jericho punched Kenny Omega so hard he started bleeding. God it's insane. No, uh, it's and some people are like rumoring that like this might actually be the main event of the show, which I really hope isn't the case, which I'll get into when we talk about the actual main event. Um, but yeah, you're familiar with Kenny at least, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So there's not much to explain here other than like the like one of the like Kenny Omega came out like nowhere with honestly with like New Japan and like he but well, not really out of nowhere. He people like knew of him like a lot and. He's really making a name for himself in New Japan, so I, I hope he wins. I, I'm, we might, we might disagree on this. I hope Kenny Omega wins this. <laughs> no, I would agree. I would, I would think it'd be best if Kenny would win this, just due mm-hmm. to uh, Chris coming in as like you know the. Uh, I don't mean this as a negative, but coming in as the part timer, uh, yeah. you know, it'd be cool to see, uh, especially the fact that Kenny is still going to. He, he's going to be there next week. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it, it, I think it'd be best if Kenny would win too. Yeah. I mean, like they could do a thing where it's like Chris Jericho wins the belt and he could drop it back the next night. But True. yeah, but it's still, it's this definitely like was like I said before, like this is going to get a lot, a lot of people looking at the product that wouldn't otherwise. Absolutely. Certainly got your attention. So yeah. And I actually, uh, uh, Jericho, I think was on his podcast or on a, another podcast was talking about that, uh, saying about how, you know, more seats have been sold for this one show, uh, in record time than the previous ones. And, mm-hmm. uh, apparently, uh, I want to say it was Naito was talking about how he was kind of bummed about this match being on here and Jericho basically telling him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> I mean, that sounds about right. Okay. So, <laughs> I'll get into like let's let's move over to the main event here with this. So, Kazucha Okada versus Tetsuya Naito for for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Now, 
How familiar are you with either of these guys? Um, I am familiar more with Okada due to his matches with Omega, Rainmaker, uh, you know, the, the six and a half star Dave Meltzer things. Um, yes. I'm yes. also familiar because Okada was the one who took that headbutt, right? Yes. Okay. So the headbutt, the guy who did the headbutt was Katsuyori Shibata. Um, so... Shibata challenged for the IGP the heavyweight title against Okada last year, mm-hmm. um, which was a f- his, like his first and only time challenging for the belt, and it was phenomenal. Like, okay, so I'm glad you brought that up because now I get to talk about Shibata. <laughs> <laughs> Shibata is like kind of the opposite of like uh, of Minoru Suzuki because Shibata was a mixed mar- like he was a wrestler. Then he left wrestling to go do mixed martial arts, and he did not do well. Oh, no. <laughs> he did not do well. So he came back to wrestling with kind of a chip on his shoulder, um, and he is an incredible... He is a dude where, where you see him, and you're just like, please, dude, wrestling's, wrestling's fake. Please don't do this. <laughs> um, and it's going to get kind of tragic in a moment. Um, so Shibata was like... He felt like he had something to prove, so he goes out there... Um, He's very, like, no-nonsense. He has, like, just black trunks, black kick pads, much like a young lion. But he just goes out there and just kicks as hard as he can. He headbutts, you know, and all this. Um, And he had a match against Okada. And he did headbutt Okada so hard that he started bleeding. Yeah. That's not the first time that's happened, by the way. No way. (laughs) Oh, God. It happened at, like, a one, at, like, some show... Where like there were like pro wrestling Noah guys were on the show, and he headbutted one of those dudes so hard, and he, the bridge of his nose started bleeding. Jesus Christ! Yeah, but also in that match, um, so Okada's finisher is the Rainmaker, which is like grabbing the dude from behind and whipping them around, and then doing a clothesline. Like it's a short arm clothesline. Mm-hmm. It's a move that like literally like two or three people have kicked out of. Like Tanahashi kicked out of it. And I and like Kenny Omega kicked out of it. Um, he did the Raidmaker to Shibata. Shibata didn't fall down. Oh like, my god! He drilled him with it, and Shibata stayed on his feet. Um, now here's the thing though, with that match, um, afterwards, Shibata collapsed backstage because he had like. Like he basically like his brain was bleeding. Holy shit! Like he like he basically like was like have like he was having a stroke backstage. I forget exactly what it was, but like it was like he had like hit him so hard that like he he had almost caused irreparable brain damage to sh- himself. Oh my god! Uh, and it was it was real bad for a time. Everyone was just like, it basically was just like, oh, is he gonna be able to wrestle again? What what what's gonna happen here? Um, okay, so let me see here. Um, yeah, a sub a subdural hematoma, uh, which required emergency surgery. Oh my god! Um, yeah, it says blood gathers within the inner layer of the dura matter and the arach- arachnoid mat- matter, usually resulting in tears in bridging veins which cross the subdural space. So it's like his brain was bleeding. Uh, from 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 just like. From this match, but also just from years and years of super stiff wrestling. Mm. Um, now, he just, and he had to have surgery, and he just was, everyone was just like, oh, what's going to happen? Like, everyone was real nervous. Um, so at the G1 Climax Finals, like right before the intermission, his music started playing, and everyone goes fucking crazy. <laughs> and he came out, and he looked fine. Oh. And he came into the ring, he sat down, and he said, this is an entire promo. promo. I am alive. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. Shibata, who is not known for talking, had a promo where it basically was, I lived, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shibata also has, like a, has a, very, a very good uh, theme song as well. Um, it's like starts off like very like easy listening, and then it turns into like sick guitars. Perfect. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of like the music to listen to when we're done. I I love wrestling themes so much. I'm so ready for this. No, um, 
New Japan has a lot of really great wrestling themes, so you should fill your iTunes list with them. Doing it. Uh, so, um, so, gave, so we talk about Shibata. Thank you for that. Um, so Okada. Um, let me see here. I'm gonna have to like I'm gonna look something up real quick because I I have to look up the. Uh, I'm gonna look up the title history for the heavyweight title, um, uh, because it's it's kind of nuts uh, right now. Um, so. Okada has been the IWGP champion uh, since June 19th, 2016. Wow. Now, here's the thing. He won that title from Tetsuya Naito back, like, um, from that day. Because Ni- remember I said Naito um, beat him, uh, beat him because Sonata interfered? Mm-hmm. Um, before, so... Okada right now has been championed for 555 days. When Naito beat him, he had been championed for 280 days. So, oh. so like, ever since, like, February 2015, um, o- like, uh, let's see. No, sorry. July 2015, uh, Okada has been championed, except for a brief period of, like, two months where Naito was champion and Okada won it back on the rematch. Um, the, so, so... The deal with Tetsuya Naito, like Okada, like like I said, like went to like he went he went to America. He came back. He became like you know the a big time star in New Japan. He's a multiple time uh, IWGP champion, um, and he's one of the biggest stars in the company. Like cha- like only like rivaled by like uh, Tanahashi. Um, actually, the last two Wrestle Kingdoms. Um, so two years ago, Okada faced Tanahashi uh, for the IWGP Heavyweight Title. And he lost against him. And afterwards, like, Okada was crying as he was being carried to the back. Oh. Uh, and, and, and Tanahashi was kind of a dick to him. <laughs> making fun of him for crying. Oh, my God. And then he just started, like, playing. This is the top face of the company. He's like, Okada, you can't beat me. Ha <laughs> ha, air guitar. <laughs> Like a real dick move. And so then came the rematch a year later. And Okada, Okada, because uh, Tanashi was challenging Okada because Okada had won the heavyweight title. And Okada beat him uh, there. Now, Tetsuya Naito, he was started out as a young lion. Went to like, went to like Mexico and like stuff. Um, and he came back. And Tetsuya Naito essentially, like, modeled a lot of his early career after Tanahashi. Because, like, he really looked up to Tanahashi. Like, he started growing his hair kind of the same way. He started doing kind of, like, the same moves. Um, and his, like, his uh, his ket- his nickname was the Stardust Genius, Tetsuya Naito. Um, and if you look at Tetsuya Naito, sometimes he his pose he does is that he uses his fingers and, like, it looks like he's holding his eye open. Yes. Um, the reason behind that is because he went to Mexico and Mexican fans were really racist towards him oh. and yelling out, like, open up your eyes to him because he's Asian. Oh, Jesus Christ. It was not great. And they would do that to him. And so he's like, you know what? Fine. Yeah, I'll do it. And he essentially just owned it. And he's just like, yeah, sure, whatever. And he just turned it into, like, his thing. Um, so... He came back as like the Stardust genius, and fans were not buying it. Honestly, <laughs> like they were kind of excited at first, but eventually they're just like, "Yo, Naito, what are you doing, man?" Uh, Naito won the G1 Climax in like 2013, and was challenging for the heavyweight title against Okada, but and that was supposed to be like the main event, but um. New Japan got kind of cold feet about it. And so they made like a fan vote be like, oh, what match do you think should be the main event? And the fans voted for Tanahashi versus Shinsuke Nakamura as the main event for the Intercontinental title. Oh. So Naito felt pretty burned by that, actually, which is why like he was kind of salty about like Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho because he's like, I'm. I've earned this main event. Don't take it away from me. Mm. Um, so Naito, like, you know, he was just like this happy go lucky, like baby face. And it was just kind of like, yeah, whatever. So Naito went back to Mexico 
and he aligned himself with the stable Los Ingobernables, which in Spanish means the ungovernable. <laughs> and so that was what he like linked up with like La Sombra and everyone there. And he was just like, you know what? No, like, fine. The fans hate me. I hate the fans. And he came back a completely different person. He would come out and he would just like walk out slowly, not care during matches. He would just like recline on like the apron. And when people would get pissed off at him, he'd be like, hey, tranquilo. <laughs> okay. Okay. Take it easy. That's what that's what that means. I have seen a lot of gifts with that. Okay. Yeah. No, that's his thing. It's just like, essentially, he's just like, why are you mad? Like, like, he's just like, people get worked up. He's like, no, nah, I'm chill. It's fine. Um. So the thing with Tetsudo Naito is like he essentially like hated New Japan because like New Japan didn't respect him and they they they're just like oh you didn't have enough confidence in me the fans did the fans hated me so I'm just not gonna give a shit so whenever he would be like in a match they you know, like they would do like tag team matches it's like filler on like shows he would always wrestle with his hat on with like a t shirt on and everything and just like his partners would want to tag him and he wouldn't tag them in. <laughs> Oh god! Uh, but like, is, is Naito also the same one who he he won a belt and then destroyed it? Yes, Tetsuya Naito won the Air Continental Championship and he threw it over his shoulder. Oh my he god. actually, actually, when he beat Okada for the heavyweight title, he was handed it. He looked at it and he threw it over his head and walked out of the ring. Holy shit! Because he his attitude was like, you know what? No, I'm only won the title because it was the only way to get you guys to notice me. People don't come to see the title. They come to see me. Like, wow. Yeah. He that's how he that's how he treated it. He's just like he's just like, I'm the champ I'm the champion so I could have better matches, but I don't care about the championship. So he would like carry it out, he would step on it, he would kick it a log. Um, and when he won the Air Continental title, he did that. He really went to town on it. Like he like threw it. Uh, he like threw it against the turnbuckle. He would slam it against the steps to the point. And the I, Air Continental Championship has a white strap. It was like dark gray. Holy by the time shit! He was done with it. The belt, the plates were broken off. Like, uh, and it was just a mess. And so when Tanahashi beat him for it, there were like photo sets of Tanahashi cleaning the belt with like a toothbrush and getting the plates <laughs> Oh, because uh, and now it's like pristine because Tanahashi actually cares about it. Mm. Um, so Tetsuya Naito, um, when he came back, he start essentially started um, a branch of Los Ingobernables in New Japan, and so that's where Los Ingobernables de Japón comes from. Uh, so. So because of and now as part of the stable he has a uh, Bushi he has Sanada he has King of Darkness Evil and he has Hiromu Takahashi and the thing with like Los Ingobernables is, is like they would like win championships and then when they would lose them they would not get rematches for them like, oh shit Naito never got a rematch for the heavyweight title when he lost it um like. King of Darkness Evil won the never open weight t- championship and then lost it and never got a rematch for it. You notice they lost the six man championships. They did not get a rematch for it. So they are understandably a little salty with New Japan. I bet. Um, so, but it's like essentially like Naito assembled all these guys who felt slighted by New Japan. Um, and so did Naito won the G1 Climax this year. And it basically Naito like only cares about like his stable mates uh, right now, mm. but he's, but like fans like actually have, and this is the thing I talked about before. Uh, Los Gobernables was a villainous stable. Now fans have kind of like him now <laughs> and fans are really getting behind Tetsuya Naito. Cause he has gotten a lot better as a wrestler. Like he beat Kenny Omega in the finals of the G1 climax. And the match was freaking amazing honestly um naito has like over the years been like consistently like the best wrestler that nobody notices in new japan Mm. like like he he was really like starting to get traction when like aj styles was in new japan and people are paying attention to him and like paying attention to like the feud with okada and tanahashi 
and Naito's just like, you know what? You you guys will cut. You guys will notice me eventually. Um, when they had the tournament for the IWGP US title, Naito at the press conference literally said, "I don't care about this title. I don't know why I'm in this tournament." Oh my god. Um, but yeah, like so, Tetsuya Naito essentially is just like. As someone said that like Naito's whole gimmick is the Hannibal Burris. Why are you booing me? I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So, so going back to like things like Tetsuya Naito is the only person to have beaten um Okada for the championship, uh, since 2015. Holy <laughs> like, crap! Like, here's the thing. Like, I'm looking. You look back at the history of the heavyweight title. Um, it was Tana starting in Wrestle Kingdom in 2011. It was Tanahashi, then Okada, then Tanahashi, then Okada, no. then AJ Styles, then Tanahashi, then AJ Styles, then Okada, then Naito, then Okada. The the belt has been among like four people in the past like six years. That is insane. Yeah, I mean. It makes like it makes it a very important title, yes. Because it's because it's like oh, it's like you know, it's very it's very hard to to win this championship, um. But it's but like I'm looking back at like the history and like the before like Tanahashi like two champion two championship runs back is Togi Bakabi, and then one championship run back from that is Shinsuke Nakamura. Whoa, yeah, like so. So like it's and then between that is Satoshi Kojima, who is like a longtime wrestler in New Japan, who will probably only show up in the New Japan Rumble this year. Um, but that was back in like 2010, actually. Wow. So so like it has got bounced between like very few people in recent years. And Naito just like upset that by winning by just like out of nowhere winning the title off of Okada. Like he Okada won it back like immediately, but the point was made because it's like Naito like essentially has Okada's number mm-hmm. uh, with this. Um, obviously Okada beat him to win the championship back and has held it for five hundred like going on two um, two years now. Like come June next year, he'll beat two years if he still holds on to it. Um, but this this might be this might be Naito's time. Like last, I want to say that like, last year's Wrestle Kingdom. Losa Gomernobles won every one of their matches. Whoa. All five of them won all of their matches. And they had the six bad belts. They had the junior title. And uh, Naito had the Air Continental title. Um, I should note, Naito faced uh, faced uh, Tanahashi for the Air Continental title last year mm-hmm. and, and beat him. So, like, that was essentially him, like, making things right with, like, his, his, his past there. Like, he essentially finally beat his idol and bowed respectfully to him afterwards it was kind of weirdly yeah it was nice it was weirdly uncharacteristic for naito but it showed that like the naito Naito has like very specific things that he cares about Mm -hmm. um and he very specifically cares about like uh hiroshi tanahashi um so yeah that's so there's a lot like writing on like this match i'm i really want naito to win i really want naito to win like it's it's time for him for, to win this match because like it'll it'll make a very bold statement uh for him for him to win the title from okada mm-hmm. okay let me drink some water i'll <laughs> go for a while Ugh. all right so that's the wrestle kingdom card i um, am in 100 percent excited for this show like yes. uh, i'm gonna be in uh i'm gonna be at MacFest when this show is going on that's so, right uh, yo my my roommates are going to MAGFest, actually. Really? Awesome. So yeah. I'm going to see if I get to, like, yo, who was watching this show? I'm crashing here for the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's... Okay, so... the sh- Like I said, the show's going to be super long. <laughs> it's going to be incredibly long. I am ready. Yeah. Um, let's see. Like, um, you can, like, uh, do it through, like, uh, New Japan's, like, uh, New Japan World Service, which is, like... It's essentially like WWE Network for them, mm-hmm. um, and it's I think it's still like nine hundred ninety nine yen a month, um, which is like comes out to like eight dollars or something. Cool. Mm, excuse me, but yeah, like it's the sh- the show will be like because it's like a really long show and like because of the time difference, it essentially will be starting at like two o'clock in the morning on the fourth. 
oh, rad. Yeah. So, um, so two o'clock in the morning on the fourth. Um, and so you could like watch it live then if you wanted to. Um, but it's, it's, and it'll be done by like seven or eight o'clock in the morning. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's the, like I said, the biggest, the biggest show, show of the year. Um, there's a lot going, a lot going on with it. And I'm glad to help get you hyped for it. I, dude, you fucking got me so excited for this show, dude. Like, yeah. Uh, also, just like there's a bunch of other like wrestlers that may or may not show up who I, ugh, God, who I simultaneously hate, hate and not hate. Um, like, like, have you ever, have you ever seen like this wrestler named Chase Owens, who's a member of Bullet Club? I've heard the name. <sighs> Chase Owens, like. Like he started like um he was a part of like the end of, like a couple years ago the NWA were had like a working relationship with New Japan, where like just NWA wrestlers would show up and NWA titles were defended and Chase Owens was had a challenge for like the NWA Junior Heavyweight title and such. Um, he's a member of Bullet Club now, and Chase Owens looks like the guy who plays AJ Styles in a Disney Channel original movie. You are 100% accurate. Holy <laughs> crap. You're looking at him now. Yep. <laughs> and he's like, every time he shows up, I just get irrationally angry <laughs> at him. So I was like, man, go away, Chase Owens. Well, you, you've never won anything. Go, get out of here. And then there's like, oh, there also a bullet club is um Hangman Page, who's Adam Page. Mm-hmm. Surely you've seen him. Yes, yes I have. But yeah. Adam Page, who looks like he plays Adam Cole in the, in the Disney Channel original movie. <laughs> or he also kind of looks like Negative Universe Drew Scanlon. <laughs> <laughs> Bullet Club is full of a bunch of idiots that I hate, honestly. <laughs> well, but they're mostly just like, like, they're like the B team. Kind of like, I was going to say, like, they're like on the level of like Buff Bagwell and the NWO. Gotcha. But that's, that feels like kind of like an easy target to hit, honestly. We need to leave Marcus Bagwell alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and there's like... So, also just like... with I'm going back to Taguchi for a second because I can't leave enough alone with him. He kind of... Taguchi started his own stable called Taguchi Japan. Um, oh, good, good. Awesome. But it's also like... Taguchi Japan is weird... Because it's like almost anyone who's not in like a stable is in Taguchi Japan. And it's like, it's like guys who you don't like, you wouldn't expect it. Like Kushida's in Taguchi Japan for some reason. <laughs> Juice Robinson is in Taguchi Japan. Tanahashi is a member of D- Taguchi Japan. Um, then there's like David Finley, who literally is Fit Finley's son. Whoa. Yeah. Fit Finley's son was a young lion in New Japan. And now he's just a regular ass wrestler there. Um, is Ricochet part of this too? Yeah, Ricochet was a member of Taguchi Japan, uh, but is listed as former now, oh. which I I think lends a lot of uh, credence to the rumors that he he's probably going to WWE now. Mm. Like Ricochet was um, the junior tag team champions with Taguchi when they lost the belts to uh, Roppongi 3K. Actually, oh wow. Um, a side note with that actually is apparently the storyline is that. While we're, while uh Sho and Yo were in America, Taguchi like sent them Taguchi Japan shirts to be like, "Hey, sure would be cool if you joined Taguchi Japan when you came back." And so what happens is they come back as Rapongi 3K and beat Taguchi Japan for the junior tag title. <laughs> <laughs> like when when Sho and Yo came out and then Taguchi came out afterwards, Taguchi with like, his hands out with this look like the fuck guys that sent you shirts like look on his face <laughs> um god oh yeah i forgot that like taguchi and and like um uh, ring of honor wrestler ach were were uh a, a team as well recently and their team name was super 69 oh, for the love of god <laughs> it's it's so dumb it really um, is it's so dumb <laughs> Yeah, but like Tsuguchi Japan is just like a dumping ground for like dudes, and they—it's not like even really like, it's a formally like like recognized stable, but they don't like stick together like and represent like their stable as much as like the other ones. Um, but yeah, that's that's Wrestle Kingdom. Get hyped for it! I'm very hyped. 
Uh, all right, so it's on January fourth. Get hyped for it. Um, man, this was this was, this went about as long as I thought it would. <laughs> like I said, I'm attending. Like this is just like the one episode of this podcast. Um, if I could think of like other things to like to to do or like catch up on, like a like one thing I thought of is like we could talk about like AAA in in Mexico, which is like. Ugh, like if you think TNA is a mess, I keep oh. hearing that, especially with the last show they had. Ugh. What? What? Um. Uh. You mean like a triple A with a triple mania? Yes. Oh yeah, no triple mania was. Uh, we, triple A has always been a shit show, it's, <laughs> but it's like a fun shit show, kind of. Like you watch it, and you're just like, ah, that's those guys. <laughs> uh, um, I might have to do a bit of research like for that because I've kind of fallen out of watching AAA. I could also do other things like Combat Zone Wrestling. Like, oh God, yes, Combat. I yo, dude, I was following Combat Zone Wrestling back in like 2002 when I was in college. There was a point in time actually I was writing articles for Combat Zone Wrestling's website. No way. <laughs> yeah, that's like, awesome. I had, yeah, I was like writing articles for them. It didn't go anywhere. But it's just like if they're in like the archives, it's just like, yeah, I wrote about I wrote about Kevin Steed and Super Dragon on CCW site. <laughs> um, I did an audio interview interview with like Niles Young. Like, it's okay if you don't know who that is. No one knows who that is. <laughs> <laughs> um But yeah, like so if an opportunity comes up, we could do this again because like I I know a lot of wrestling history and I go off on this shit all the time. And it's, I can't thank you enough for being an audience for it. Oh dude. I had such a fun time doing this. Yes. Okay. Um, let me wrap it up by saying, and now you're caught up on the wrestling. (laughs) 